Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Simon Fiber, and welcome to Two and a Half Gamers. We're joined today, as always, by NBZ. Unfortunately, Fizzy has to work and was unable to make it, but we do have Johnny here to replace him. How are you doing today, Johnny? I'm doing great, Mr. Jake. High and Fiber Walker, because that is his real name. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we've got uh, Johnny here as uh, a guest who uh, he plays lots of games. He knows lots of games. Um, so, I will just do a quick uh, what sort of stuff that you generally play, and uh, let the people know what stuff you play and stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, outside of my let's plays, which is what I'm known for doing on the internet, the YouTube is internet. I'm somewhat of a old school gamer. I realized very a long time ago that it's a lot easier to just buy like like ten eight dollar games and just you know buy a new game. So I've been doing that for a pretty long time actually, and that's pretty much what I do. I like the N64 and PS2 because there's so many games and I've never experienced them. And yeah, that's what I play. So so do you pick up a lot of used like old titles or do you use the virtual console quite a lot? Um, a little of both, really. Um, most of the time, how used games don't really come in the greatest condition, so if I can get it on virtual console, that's definitely where I go beforehand, but... Okay. You know. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Just like your name. <laughs> 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 Look at that. Look at that. Mm. Anyway, uh, Fiber, you want to lead into, uh, our segment of segments? Well... As you guys have probably known by now, we like to start off the stream by talking a little bit about what we've been playing during the week. Call this What the Fuck is Up? What the Fuck Have You Been Playing? MBZ, let's start with you. Okay, so um, this week, I obviously, last week I was at home, and then like after last Saturday, we uh, did the thing, and I said I almost beat Portal 2, and I did in fact beat Portal 2 the next day, and I was in fact about 15 minutes from the end, uh, around 15 to 20 minutes anyway, um, and all well, I have to say really is the ending of that game is just mind-blowing, <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> really? Uh, it was really awesome, definitely, uh, definitely didn't something it, that I uh, recommend. Didn't it win a BAFTA? the other day? Yes, actually. Uh, we, that's something we could actually talk about as well. Um, I was watching that live last night, uh, the video game BAFTAs, uh, held in the UK, of course, you know, the British Academy, or all, <laughs> all that. So um, I, I think it won best game. It won uh, best game overall, and uh, and lots of other things, a couple of other um, things as well. But yeah, definitely got uh, some good recognition at the awards, which I, I uh, appreciate. I think it deserves all of that. Um, and yeah, the ending's fantastic. But I'm not done with the game, obviously. There's the co-op, which I still haven't played. So I will probably try and get some of that done whenever I'm able to with people and stuff. Um, but yeah, I did finish up all too. That's just a kind of a side note, because I, I talked a little bit about it last week. Uh, but what I did play more mainly on my PS3 at the weekend was some more of uh, Uncharted 2, uh, which just continues to blow my mind, like, unbelievably. I really, really enjoy that game a lot. And um, it's a shame that I don't have more time at home with my PS3, because I, I easily would have finished it by this point. Um, but I, I basically had... Uh, an essay to do like the when I was playing it so I basically did some of that and then had like three or four hours in the afternoon before I came back to uni uh, and I just played the hell out of Uncharted 2. I was doing the segment uh, I don't th really think this is spoilers but it's a segment on a train um, and you're going and killing guys on the train while the train is moving through these incredible environments and it just just visually stunning and uh, the physics engine is amazing it's like when the t train turns and stuff your bullets will fly and you know they will angle dependent on the the motion and all that stuff so it's pretty amazing how the the engine works and all the you know graphics and stuff works as well um so definitely something that i continue to want to play more of and i will probably I'm, I'm going home next week for a couple of weeks so i probably will finish uncharted 2 uh, when i'm at home but it's uh, it's definitely an interesting game have either of you um played uncharted 2 I have. I bought it about a week after it came out. I was a big fan of the original. And uh, I went out, I bought it, and I went to my buddy's house because he's got a nice 50-inch TV, and we basically oh. played the first half of the game <laughs> that night. Uh -huh. And then I went home, and I was like, 
crap, and I got to start from the beginning to figure out what happens next. Oh, so, <laughs> ended up playing through it. It was It's a great game. I know exactly the part you're talking about. Yeah, it's uh, pretty phenomenal. Kind of The game kind of starts just after that, and then you go through a flashback to get to where that point is again. Mm-hmm. But... It's yeah, it's a fun game. I haven't gotten a chance to play Uncharted three yet. I'm looking forward Neither to doing that when I get some money. Mm-hmm. But what about you, Johnny? Have you had any experience with the Uncharted series? Well, after that giant plot spoiling, you know, <laughs> train. <laughs> I, train. What's up the story? <laughs> but uh, no. Um, my friends have constantly they're, they're big PS three people. I don't honestly have one. I'm trying to save up for one. Anyways, uh, they have the entire series, including Golden Abyss and oh, they have a Vita. Wind. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they were, got a first day, and um, they said, "Oh, you gotta try it, try." It. So I played the first one, and that like, I wasn't really too impressed. Then I saw like the crap you do in the second one. Look at that mountain. Oh, another mm-hmm. spoiler. I'm sorry, there's a mountain. Oh no, mountains <laughs> and trains. <laughs> no one's gonna play it now. I like trains. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I haven't been really too keen on shooting games for a while, honestly. After the whole Halo 3 buzz train thing, <laughs> train, yeah, uh, trains. went down, went down Halo essentially for me. But I've heard so many good things about the third and second installment that I'm actually willing to give it another chance. I don't see reason yeah. not to. Yeah, I definitely well, should. The thing with Uncharted is, uh, in a very similar sense to uh, Deus Ex, it's not a shooter. Uncharted is more of a movie that you know you interact with. Um, it's the story. It's actually got a story, which is very uncommon in shooting games. Usually, <laughs> exactly. Gears not war, see man, kill <laughs> man. There's actually a purpose, and I don't know. I I enjoy it, and I'm not a big fan of shooters myself. Mm. But and it was. It's certainly one of those games that I would suggest to a lot of people, especially when you can get it for like twenty dollars now, thanks to oh, yeah. the greatest hits and whatnot. Exactly. Yeah, I, I really feel that Uncharted is a series that gameplay comes second to the cinematic experience because, mm. it, I mean, like that that train segment where you're just going through <laughs> absolutely everything. You just go to train. Really, <laughs> these lush environments and just the motion blur and everything, and it's just it's epic. It looks incredible, and the way that you know Drake controls and everything, it's very realistic. It's I, I I mean it gets repetitive I guess with the shooting mechanics, but they do so much during the game to shake that up, like putting you on the train, like putting you in environments where you're injured or whatever, and uh, oh, uh, putting poor you. Poor Drake, that guy gets the shit kicked out of him really. so much. <laughs> but I mean, there's so many different settings. I think that's one really good thing that Uncharted 2 has over the first game is in the first game you're basically trapped on one island and it's a single. It's very linear. You're going just basically on this set path all the way through the island across it and shooting guys as you go really um so the scenery doesn't really change a lot whereas in uncharted 2 you're you're basically a globe-trotting adventure and yeah, you, uh, really good mix between all the things so um it's definitely and, and uh, to be fair even uncharted 2 is linear but in the sense that you, there's so much more open area that you can go to to get to point a and b it's not you're on a rail yeah, which yeah. is something I really enjoy about those games. Mm-hmm, definitely. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's definitely a good incentive for me to play. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's a train. So. Oh, oh my! <laughs> and a mountain. But if there's a mountain on a train, I'm sold. Like, <laughs> but a train on a mountain. That, that, in fact, there is a train on a mountain. So. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, um, apart from Uncharted 2, I have uh, been doing a bit of a live stream of me failing at Super Mario Bros. 3. Uh, I've had um, Super Mario Bros. 3 on my Wii Virtual Console for a good part of like three or four years at this point. My friend gave it to me. Uh, he, like, I think it was for my birthday, he gave me like a few Virtual Console games. Um, so I got like Pokemon Snap and that and something else, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, I got that. And uh, I played it when I got it, and I was like, well, I'm fucking terrible at this game. Fuck this game. <laughs> like, I couldn't do it. I'm really, really bad at old-school Mario games. I uh, I mean, all the new ones, I'm, I'm fine with Galaxy and 3D Land and all that stuff. And even, like... Uh, Super Mario Land on the Game Boy and Wario Land. I love all those games, and I can play them, I can beat them, but 
three is tough as nails it really is and i think what a lot of the problem is is that people who played three when they were younger basically have the ninja reflexes because they played that game (laughs) so much that the entire game is like inbuilt into their memory and they can just muscle memory their way through the entire game so that is a big issue i feel uh with you know a barrier to entry into those sort of mario games um but it is a lot of fun and i can see why it is so widely acclaimed by everyone and why everyone loves it so much uh because it is you know for a game of being released back in whatever it was in the 90s or late 80s. I think it was 1993 or 1992. Three. I mean, it has an incredible, you know, amount of... The physics and the jumping is amazing. It's just very, very nuanced and very easy to understand and easy to control. And um, just the momentum and everything, it works very, very well. So uh, I, uh, it's something that I'm going to try and push myself through. But if I can't make it, then so be it, because it's tough and it will take me a long time. I'm guessing and, that you are much better and, than I am. And, and there's a leaf in that game that turns you into a raccoon. Oh, hell yeah. And, <laughs> and if you That's, get the star, Mario does like a ninja flip. Oh, now yeah. Now there's Mario ninja. Uh, true That's that. That's like the, that. I almost wet my pants when I was a baby playing that. Good thing I was a baby wearing a diaper. So that just saying. Yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing. I still wear a diaper. Both of you. <laughs> uh, well, you're fine. You like, have to. Like he, if I wear a diaper, that just means I don't have to get up to stop playing. <laughs> true. True that. True that. But um. Right. So yeah, Super Mario is three, uh, which pretty much everyone in the world is better at than I am. But so be it. Oh, well, I guess it causes uh, entertainment because I'm going to upload later this week 48 minutes of me going through World 2. 48 minutes. World 2 should tell you all you need to know about how bad I am at this game. Uh, but it was pretty funny. So, you know, people enjoy that, I hope. But um, And then the last thing I have, which I actually beat today. So I'm continuing on my quest to beat... The, my backlog into the ground uh, that's my third game that I've now finished which is the second Professor Layton game on the Nintendo DS and um, I started this a really long time ago, I think it was like five or six months ago maybe about that time um, I played through the first one relatively quickly so I guess I got a little bit burned out on it um, I mean it is a lot of the same thing solving puzzles and though there is variety in that a lot of the puzzles have similarities to them so you can get worn out a little bit I feel if you you know knock at it for too long but it is a very very good game I think I like the story and how ridiculous and over the top it is by the end. Uh, it's It seems all very mysterious and interesting as you go along. Uh, but, like, the ending of both the games has just had me, like, what the fuck is... Like, what is this? It's <laughs> fucking ridiculous um, by the end of both of them. Uh, so it is definitely... Uh, a good, good, uh, interesting hooking story, I feel. Um, I mean, for the DS, the amount of effort they've gone into voice acting on to have it on the cartridge and everything, and there's actually some really good cutscenes on it as well. It's all like sort of animated, cartoon style, but it's really well uh, animated, well drawn, and the voice acting's good, apart from Luke, who sounds like literally like a three year old in his ridiculous. <laughs> voice is so high and it just sounds stupid but um it's definitely uh a good game uh second one anyway uh it i think it took me like 12 or so hours so you can it depends on uh how you want to go through it if you want to go for every puzzle then it will obviously take you a lot longer uh and if you don't then you will be able to run through it a lot quicker than that but you do have to complete a certain amount of puzzles to move on to the next sec- section and stuff like that so it does make you uh go through it before you can just rush through it all um but it's a, a very interesting game, and um, I don't think I would have played a game like this had there not been uh, a sort of story built around it, because the puzzles on their own are interesting, but I would get bored of them too quickly to be able to, you know, for it to hold my interest. Um, and yeah, McBoss has just mentioned that there is a Professor Layton movie, uh, which is something that I definitely want to check out, because... Um, the, that interests me a lot and uh, hmm. I th- think it's been dubbed into English that if not there's I'm sure there's a Japanese subbed version so I uh, I definitely want to go see that um, 
or find a DVD or just illegally watch it online like an illegal pirate. La 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 la. la. <laughs> we don't endorse pirating on this show. We do not, even though I played Stress Layton on my Ace card. <coughs> um, <laughs> that's my point. Um, and yeah, that's that's Layton for you. Any either of you played Layton before? Had experience. Before? Uh, I haven't, to be fair, though. I don't play a lot of DS titles. Uh, mm-hmm. I've I played a fair number of uh, games that you know have been re-released on the DS. Of course, the Pokemon games on the DS I played, but for the most part, my DS is really just kind of sat there. It's more of a paperweight right now, which is sad. <laughs> That's very sad indeed. I mean, just... I can't find my micro SD adapter. Otherwise, I would probably put more games on my Ace card, but... Um, one of the games that I played through on it, which was incredibly hard to do because I don't understand a word of Japanese, was uh, Shining Force Feather, and I'm a big fan of the Shining Force series, but unfortunately, Shining Force Feather was not released in North America. Oh, so what it implies? Is there no fan translation of it? I haven't been able to find one, so I literally just trudged through that game in Japanese just trying to guess what I'm supposed to do. Thankfully, it is very similar to Fire Emblem in the sense that there's no real pathing that you have to find. It's very linear. It's There's a battle here. You go through a little bit of a cutscene. There's another battle. So I was able to, to trudge through it. But it was unfortunate that I couldn't pay attention to the story. Oh, well. That's how it happens sometimes. Johnny, have you well, played um, <laughs> um I have never even touched the game. I'm not a big DS guy either. Just because it's like, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not a pirate, so that's one thing. <laughs> but, um... It's, yeah, it, it's kind of like the Uncharted thing. You know it's a good game. You know, everybody loves it. But I, I've just never given it the chance, honestly. But Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> it's, I guess it's for certain people. Um, yeah. It's all right. Like, I didn't I didn't think it was fantastic. It was fun. It was a good game. And I'm definitely going to check out the third one and the fourth one and just go through them because right. I think the story is just is so over the top that I have to hear what happens in the, in the next one because it's just ridiculous. You just stand there and you're like, really? Really, you wrote this? Like, what the hell? Like, uh, but yeah. Really though? Really though? <laughs> I, I would say that a lot. I would say that a lot. But uh, yeah, um, that's what I've been playing this week, essentially. Um, and there you go. As I, it seems like I've played a lot, but I really haven't done that much because I was only <laughs> about an hour and a half away from the end of Professor Layton. Uncharted, I only played a couple of hours of, and Mario was like. A, our stream or so and i've had a lot of essays this week so i haven't really been playing too much but that's what i have and there you go so all right well johnny go next is there anything you've been playing this week um yeah there actually has uh i just recently put down a um game for the ps2 which uh is a japanese rpg it's a really under the radar it's from a franchise called shimigami tensei oh, i've heard really of this for, i've had no idea oh, shimigami what they're tensei. About. But, um, I wouldn't really call Shimigami Tensei under the radar. I know a lot of people who are really big fans of the series. Well, but... the, what I've actually learned from that is that there, there's very, bleh, there's a couple of divisions of Shimigami Tensei, which is like there's Persona, yeah. there's the digital, blah, 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 crap. Yeah. I actually played like the third installment, which was like I believe it was like one of the first RPGs for, or just like PS2 games in general, which I actually found to be a very very fun game. Essentially. You're a teenager, and then the world ends, and then you're just like this monster dude, and you go around beat people up. Not really the greatest story, but it is a whole lot of fun. Uh, don't really recommend it though, because it's really, really hard. It's probably one of the hardest RPGs ever played, because it's not like Pokemon. You know, X beats this, Y beats this. It's more like okay, so kill yourself, and then he'll heal you, and then he'll kill himself. It makes it's very, it's almost impossible to use without a guide. So it's a very but, complicated battle system. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's and, uh, actually a Shimigami Tensei MMO out there. I know this because oh uh, the company that uh, put it out, I used to play a lot of games on. I don't know All if right. it's any good, but I do know it was. it's obviously popular enough that it found <laughs> itself into the MMO scene. I, so. I've looked into that, and it's not made by Atlas, which is the people that make the Shimigami Tensei games. Yeah, well, that's kind of what happens. Yeah. You know, I haven't really given it a chance, but it, it could be good. I don't know. Um, outside of the very Asian-sounding games, I've played a game called Diddy Kong Racing, which when I was little, I was like, that's game. What is that? Like- I've never heard of it before. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i never actually given it a chance, and i got to say it's probably one of the best. 
Oh, so that's you never you never played it before when you were younger? Yeah, so I bought it really cheap uh, online. Super fun, right. except it's like insanely hard, and then the later levels. Yeah, yeah. I just recently went through Mario Sunshine. And yeah, you know everybody knows about that game because of YouTube and crap. Yeah, yeah that's, Sunshine's that's, one of the most LP'd games I think on YouTube. Oh yeah, without a doubt. It's very, very, very popular. But it's a real good game. Yeah. And uh, been preparing for my let's plays and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. doing some tape. Going back Aside to Diddy, that, uh, yeah, okay. just going back to Diddy Kong Racing though. What did you think of the single player? Because I think the single player is really interesting. What they did with it, as opposed to the Mario Kart model of just going through GPS, it's basically like an open world kind of thing with a single player. Yeah. A lot of people criticize it apparently because they just said it was very, you know, not that big of a deal. But at the same time, you gotta think of it through a kid's mindset. There's a lot of exploration to do. Yeah. Not really, you know. And you kind of have like stars, except they're balloons. Mm-hmm. Which most of the time you get some stars through races, but there's like four balloons out in the overworld. I feel like that was a lot of mis- potential because mm-hmm. you just get them all instantly. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, th- but, I think it adds like a lot of uniqueness to it. Um, and also yeah. because you can ride on a boat and in a plane that's kind of set yeah. apart from Mario Kart as well yeah that's a uh, that's a game changer really because it's yeah. three different types of play styles you have to master uh-huh. and they have uh, bosses as well which is weird yeah, for a racing game that's really that's a really good selling part I remember like le- playing Lego freaking racing on the PC and be like freaking out because it was the first game with boss fights in it oh man I remember Lego races on the PC that was a great yeah <laughs> Yeah, that was an okay game. I don't know. I should probably play that one again too. But yeah, did come well, racing. A lot of really cool games too. They really do. Remember Legoland? That was Legoland. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah. yeah. Uh, that... so about... Sorry. That. <laughs> uh, is it? Is it? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. High and Fiber, what have you been up to playing? In oh the... well. This week, I've been having a lot of internet issues, so if I suddenly disappear during the stream, it's because my internet clinked out, and I'll be back. But it has allowed me to play a number of different games. I have been playing Final Fantasy VI again, because I love that game. It's one of my favorites of all time. How many times have you beaten it before? Thank Final you. Final Fantasy VI, not that many. Uh, hey. Probably about six. <laughs> That's fitting, Indeed. Yeah, uh, I didn't mean I've I've started it a few times as well and just didn't finish it, but mm-hmm, it's probably yeah. been about six times. Uh, I of course ended up downloading Super Mario Three when Zed was streaming just to see if I could get past him. <laughs> and I was in fact one of those people who played it when I was younger, and I still remember a lot of the you know the secrets and, and yeah, shortcuts yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, how to beat the angry halfway stuff. through World Two, and I was like, I haven't died yet. I'm kind of bored at this point. I'm not finding this nearly as challenging as MBZ did. <laughs> <laughs> so what I ended up doing was I went over into my drawer of PS3 games and I looked at Dark Souls. I was like, I've beaten this game, but I want to play it again. So I popped that in and I decided to do a little bit of a challenge for myself, which is I'm only going to use fist weapons to try and beat that game. And anybody who's played that game knows it's pretty difficult at the best of times to try and punch your way through some giant monsters. (laughs) is going to be a bit of a challenge. But it it was one of those things where uh, I was like, I want something to play. What was a game that I've really enjoyed or a game that I really feel like playing? And it popped out of me in my drawer. So I've been playing a bunch of that. And then, you know, Final Fantasy VI and my typical Star Wars, League of Legends, all that kind of crap. But League of Legends, you know, League of Legends. Oh. To be fair, I actually haven't played League of Legends this week. So oh, I take wow. Stunning. Star Wars I have. Well, my internet's mm. kind of been one of those things where it's like if oh, I start yeah. a game, I yeah, probably yeah. won't finish it. Yeah. Um, with Star Wars, at least if I disconnect, it's one of those things where I could pop back in. Unless I'm right. doing PvP, which happened a few times where I was trying to get my daily missions done. Mm-hmm. I'm at the end of a mission in PvP, and then my internet crashes, and I have to start again. Uh, I was like, ugh. That's frustrating. Mm, hate that. So far, it's been okay today. I've had a couple issues before the show started. Hopefully it stays nice and fresh while we continue to do this. And if I had anything made of wood in my room, I'd go knock on it, but I don't. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's that's pretty much what I've been playing. Some Dark Souls and Final Fantasy VI. Okay, awesome. all right. So, what is up next in our drawer of cabinet of podcast stuff? 
Well, did we did we end up finding anything for stuff in Japan? Oh, right, yeah. So <clears throat> we didn't really find too much for fuck you, Japan, we want this segment of <laughs> this. Um, but Johnny did mention uh, that uh, the Pokemon Nobunaga's Ambition game uh, was recently released in Japan. Um, so we can, uh, I guess, talk a little bit about that and... Uh, how big of a deal that is and stuff and how much we know about Nobunaga's ambition. Uh, and I know uh, absolutely nothing, so hopefully one of you two knows enough for me to uh, <laughs> throw an opinion out there. Okay. The game hasn't been released yet, but due to the screenshots, we can basically assume that it's a uh, joint conglomeration of Pokemon Company and Koei games, making something that is alongside of a Fire Emblem game mixed with Advance Wars. You have, like, COs, and then your units are, like, Pokemon. And, uh, Knights of Lotus and all those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, who's really to say if it's gonna be good or not? Um, I personally don't think it's the best thing for Pokemon at the moment, but a little variety probably won't hurt. I I think that it's, um, it's going to be a much more interesting spin-off than any of the other spin-offs have been. I think that right. a lot of the other spin-offs don't really require the same thought that the standard Pokemon games do. You know, you've got fucking, like, Rumble, Bash, Mash, Face, yeah, which is just, like, mash things. buttons. You just mash buttons and run around like a brawler. It's very mindless and not very uh, expansive at all. And there's the Mystery Dungeon games, which are just, like, I don't even know. They just, they're terrible. <laughs> I don't know if anybody who's played them, really, but they have oh. good music, is all I know. Anyone who's played them that I know of has said they are horrible. Like, there's this one podcast I listen to, which is the main one I do listen to, called Radio Free Nintendo, and uh, one of the guys on there, he reviewed the game when it first came out, and he just, like, it's a running joke on the podcast about how much he derailed it and how much he <laughs> fucking ruined it in the review because he said it was absolutely terrible uh so it's something that i'm not really gonna ever try and play the mystery dungeon games but this and seems I've seen uh, that, uh, pokemon rangers that seems overly simple even for pokemon really yeah it's like drawing circles around stuff it's a bit, <laughs> yeah. a bit weird i think it was one of those yeah, it was a relatively it, early. um this is Is he picking oranges? He's picking... He is picking oranges. No, 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 he's okay. What? We're okay. Uh, 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 I don't uh, hear... Uh, te- what? Technical uh. difficulties. <laughs> no, no, well, I, I was, what I was going to say about um, the thing... What was I going to say? You <laughs> have completely lost my <laughs> track now. We're <laughs> um, on the topic of Pokemon Rangers. Yes, I yeah. Believe. No, I think that that Pokemon Rangers was a game that was very near the DS launch or relatively close to it, that it implemented a lot of the DS features that people were just shoehorning onto games because the system was new and it had a touchscreen and a microphone and all the fancy, you know, bells and whistles on it. So um, I think that it, I think it was all right. I'd say that people preferred it to Mystery Dungeon games, maybe. I'm not sure about that. Um, but it was an interesting game. That would be cool, I guess, as a All sequel. Right. Um, yeah, that's good. It has a couple sequels, doesn't it? I don't... It probably does, actually. I Mystery mean, Dungeon? Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, there's a few of them came out. Uh-oh, okay. what, sorry? Your, your audio's just died a little bit as well. I'll rejoin the call. Okay. Give um, over five Okay. <laughs> yeah, but Nobunaga's ambition seemed really interesting, especially to me, just because I'm such a big fan of the Fire Emblem series that that kind of game is very appealing to me. Um, in terms of like RPGs and strategy things, Fire Emblem is like right at the top of the list for me. I really do love the Fire Emblem series, um, and I think that if this reviews well and if people say a lot of good things about it, I'm definitely going to be very interested in it because uh, I am a fan of Pokemon. I'm a very big fan of Fire Emblem. And when you take both of them, mix them together, and it's a good game, then it's something that I'm interested in buying. So De- Definitely same here. Uh, the only thing that's higher for me on Fire, or, uh, Fire Emblem is Advance Wars uh, with the crap Nintendo. I yeah, made a game like 20 years with the... Yeah, I that, hasn't, about that yeah, but, um, hasn't been Advance Wars game since the GBA. Well, obviously, Advance Wars, no, duh. <laughs> duh. The last ones there was the uh, DS, and they killed oh, there, every there has been. CO. Yeah, there were, there were two on the DS, right? <sighs> yeah, there's Dual Strike and then the other one, and it was like the, uh, the second one, because Dual Strike had like every CO up to that point, which is right. primarily the selling point of that game, but right. second DS game, there's like, hey, screw you, kill them all. 
and they all died or something. It, yeah. I didn't like it. I didn't pick it up. I guess that's maybe why they're not. Who knows? But uh, yeah, when you think about it from this perspective, Pokemon it has actually tried a lot of spinoffs. It and has. when you really think a tactical RPG is not the worst one, you know, Definitely. outside of a fighting game, like a 2D fighting game, which, you know, Super Effective was already out, but, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'm getting at. There have been some really, really horrible spin-offs, and we know. <laughs> yeah, so. so. Pokemon Dash, well, that was a launch game for the Oh, D- my gosh. Oh, <laughs> don't bring that up. Um, I just, anyone who played that, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. And that puzzle one? Oh, my gosh. I think the Puzzle League games were relatively well-received. Not, not the um, po- Puzzle League, like the Topi Yapuchwa? Oh, Tope. Tope. I don't know. I, I got that. that for Christmas and Astro Return. Uh-huh. I really think that the only interesting Pokemon spin-offs are, first and foremost, the pinball games, which I think Yay, are pinball. fantastic. The pinball <laughs> games are fantastic. I love those. Um, I My dad is a pinball ninja. Uh, or wizard, I guess, is the best thing to say. <laughs> pinball ninja. Um, pinball ninja wizard. <laughs> he's a ninja wizard of pinball. He's ridiculous, that <laughs> game. Like, his high score is stupid, like, through the roof. Um <laughs> Like it's the one thing that my dad can destroy me at is pinball in video games. Uh, he just completely dominates me in that that field. But um, yeah, that was a really big game. The Rumble Pack on the original Pokemon Pinball was a big selling point as well. I liked that a lot. Um, and then the GBA one was great as well. So those are really good. And then the other one, Pokemon Snap, obviously, which everyone knows and loves. Oh yeah, dude. I want a remake. I want a sequel. Dude, 3DS remake with the camera and oh, they should do some AR stuff with that. That would be cool. I want, I want a Wii U. I want a Wii U Pokemon Snap title. Make it happen, Nintendo. I think it could happen. E3 is rolling around and they haven't announced much for Wii U, so that would be very, very awesome. Yeah, dude. It's going on my whistle. <laughs> Definitely. The only thing I want to see out of Wii U is another 3D Donkey Kong game. You like Donkey Kong Country Returns? Um, oh yeah, I loved yeah. it to death. It, Beat it, that it, game probably seven times. It is a very difficult game uh, in comparison to the other uh, platformer they released that year in Kirby. They are two completely starkly different games in terms of difficulty and in terms of just mood and everything. Uh, but right. you know, both distinctly Nintendo in their uh, yeah. in the you know the way they were implemented. Um, right. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I actually played uh, DKC Returns with my cousin, who's, like, 11, uh, and uh, it was difficult. It's, it's hard in co-op, but when you're trying to, like, both stay on the screen at the same time and everything, and you're just shouting at each other, <laughs> then it becomes a bit of a mess. Um, I, would, I haven't actually got the game yet, because uh, Nintendo games never fucking go down in price, uh, so I, uh, I'm not going to pick it up until it does, but I definitely oh, yeah, never it and play it's... it. Oh, oh I gosh. don't I don't mean to interject, but the stream has gone offline. But hopefully we can put it back up without without too many cursive and swearing and try and keep on trucking for the purposes of the VOD at least. Yes, indeed. Do we just lose that entire conversation here. No, um, we we've got it on the because uh, oh right, right yeah it's we're we're recording <laughs> things. It's just the the stream itself had yeah, gone I off. I restarted right. the thing. It should be working now. Oh, something else you could bring up about that, uh, what the heck, Japan, or after this part, there's a, it's supposed to be a Professor Layton slash Phoenix Wright oh, thing. true, true, yeah. Yeah, as well. So, uh, that... I'm not quite um, sure if that's going to be coming out, um, <clears throat> and, uh, uh, are we back online with the stream? It does appear that we're back on. Okay, uh, sorry, right. just a quick blip there, people, on the stream, but, yeah, no, Johnny was just bringing up the point that there is supposedly a Phoenix Wright versus Professor Layton game, well, not supposedly, we know there is, uh, we don't know whether it will come to the UK or the US yet, but, um... It's, it's literally versus, they fight, there's I no... Know. It's, no it puzzles. looks really <laughs> awesome, it's like taking the two things that I think are awesome on the DS, and... It's, it's awesome. Street Fighter X Tekken with... It, it is, it's pretty <laughs> much Street Fighter X Tekken for the people who like Phoenix Wright and Presser Layton, which is damn Total awesome. Characters. Total exactly. characters, exactly, that's all you need. Yeah, but that is another thing that Japan are definitely getting, and we're not quite sure about yet, but hopefully we will. Hopefully For some reason, Phoenix Wright doesn't do very well over here. I don't really understand that. Yeah. But, yeah. Too much yeah. card. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, more Call of Duty. Exactly. <laughs> he said duty. Duty. <laughs> Doo-doo. Oh. Anyway, uh, so that's pretty much uh, Nobunaga's ambition versus Pokemon type thing. 
we uh, we know bits and pieces about it, but we'll see how it actually works out in the end, I guess. So there you go. Definitely there you go. I like it. Indeed. So um, I think that we could tell people how they can call in. We're not going to take call-ins just yet. I don't. Yes, we're not going to take calls just yet, but thankfully. McBoss has been kind enough to Y'all volunteer bitch. his service. <laughs> yeah, he's volunteered to be our bitch. And <laughs> you will be able to add at McBoss on Skype if you have – you will have to tell him what you want to say to us or the question you want to ask us, et cetera. If it is you know, relevant to the show, it's not you just coming in to troll us, we'd love to have you. It will probably be closer to the end of the show. We have two topics we're going to talk about prior to that. Yeah. But – so, Get your questions and stuff, your opinions. We'd love to hear them. Um, you'd be able to, like I said, McBoss will be the liaison for that. McBoss and, will put his Skype name into the stream chat. So you basically just add McBoss on Skype, and he will bring you into the into the call, and then we'll uh, and then we'll kick you out. Yeah, because we'll, yeah, like, <laughs> otherwise it get too messy. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. But. Let us jump into our quote-unquote news topics, and uh, the first one we're going to talk about is something that NBZ is kind of found and is following, and it's the Backloggery website, and I'll let him do a little bit of discussion about that to start off with, because hopefully I won't just drop out of the call again, but... Exactly. He said, take it away. Okay, so uh, I, of course, have been, for the past three episodes of the podcast, been completing games, uh, mainly because I have a relatively large backlog of games that I uh, have you know, left uncompleted or didn't get the time to finish or just bought and never even started yet because it was cheap or whatever. Um, And so that's been kind of a little bit of a mission of mine. I want to go through these games. I want to finish them and get as much of it done as possible. Um, But basically, I found this website. I actually heard of it from another podcast, um, and they uh, were talking about it, and it's called uh, Backlogger. Uh, I think is the name of the site. Um, uh, Backloggery, sorry, Backloggery. And I'll just bring this up here on screen. But as you can see, um, this is uh, what I've got going on here. Um, And um, I've inputted all the games that I have yet to complete uh, and that I'm still working through, essentially. Uh, And uh, you basically put them in, and then you have these icons here which tell you what stage they're in. Like, this means that you haven't started it yet. This means that it's uncompleted. And um, then there's uh, this, which is completed, which is Professor Layton, which I just finished today, of course. So I just tick that off the list, um, and it goes like that. And you can can track your progress like this. This tells you all your stuff and what you've beaten and what you haven't beaten. and all that good stuff. So I have a lot of games here that I have to get through, um, and it separates them all into system. It's a very nice, uh, very nice site in general. So the website is um, backloggery.com. Um, I can put a, uh, a link to that in the stream. Oh, uh, my boss already did it. Okay, well, I put it in anyway, but there you go. Uh, and <clears throat> you can sign up for the site. I think you can add people on it as well. So... I might do that and add some of you people if you want to add me, then go ahead and do that and you can track your progress and see how you're doing. Um, but that is, that's generally the idea of the site. And uh, yeah, we just, I guess, talk a little bit about backlogs in general, how they happen, why they happen, and uh, I guess what sort of stops you from playing a game uh, and what causes that to really uh, make that happen and you know lose your, lose your interest, I guess. So... Um, Fiber, what's your backlog like, I guess? At the moment? Mine is, well, for one, if I ever pulled up my Steam account and showed you that, you'd probably see about 20 games, only five of which are probably installed right now. Maybe 10 of them have gameplay time on them. For, you know, various reasons, I'm one of those people who will buy a game on Steam if it's on sale and it's something that I want to play. Or uh, it's a game that I buy that just ends up being forgotten about for various reasons. Um, my PS3 drawer, I have tons of games in there that some of them I haven't finished. Uh, a couple of them I picked up that I beat in the past, but um, would like to play again and all this sort of thing. So my, my game backlog is ridiculously long for the amount of games that I actually play. 
And my issue with this with this backloggery site is that um, if if I don't physically go and check things off, it's it's the same thing. I, I, it's not that I don't play the games half the time; I forget they're there. And I have a feeling that if I did a backloggery that wasn't somehow connected to my PlayStation Network or my Steam my account and whatnot, and automatically updated, it'd be one of those things that I'd kind of forget about. Yeah, but yeah. It's certainly a good idea, um, but like I said, for me personally, for for how I game, it might be something that just doesn't suit my needs. Okay, that makes sense. No, is it still? Is it still? Uh... No, no, you're, fi- you're fine. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Um, is it me next by the backlog? Yeah, uh, sure. Go yeah, ahead. Sure. You have a thought. All right. Um, this thing is a hundred percent useless for me, and you know why? I'm the type of dude. That just like <laughs> I get a game, beat it 100% quick as possible. I've just always played games like that. I yeah. don't know. I, I remember. I remember when Skyward Sword came out, and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, Skyward Sword. What do you think of it?" And you're like, "Oh, I beat it." I'm like, "It, it came out today <laughs> or something." Two and I'm days. like, <laughs> it was, <laughs> I, I beat like, it two days. It was freaking crazy. I was like, "What?" And then uh, like I asked you about it two days later. You're like, "Oh, I beat it again." I'm like, "What? <laughs> what?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, hero mode, not all it's cracked up to be. Don't really? Was it good. difficult? That's just my opinion. It's you'd think it'd be difficult. It's still hard early on, but then you get an item that totally half negates the hardest thing by hero mode, which is you can't find hearts as quickly. Yeah. Which, and it's like, well, you'd think they'd fix that, but they didn't. And you get potions that just make the game not hard anymore. So, okay. eh, not really worth it. But that's just yeah, it. yeah. Uh, you can definitely make Zelda games harder. By mm. doing stuff like not just said in the chat, you play hero mode with six hearts and no shield. I guess oh, that's, that's a way to yeah. go through it. <laughs> I'm okay. I, I'm thinking about trying that. You, you Probably stream. It. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, cool. dude. I'd... Yeah. But, Thank you, yeah. Mister. <laughs> yeah. So you um, you generally uh, just finish games as soon as you get them, I guess. Even if I don't like it, like <laughs> I got Super Mario or uh, Super Paper Mario. Terrible game. Can't believe they made it. Beat it. And I just try to play something else, but mm. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've just always been like that, even as a kid. My mom get real mad at me. You just buy that game, you don't play it longer. And it's like, you know. So yeah. you usually like have when you're playing game, go through it in a relatively long session, or do you? I mean, like how like how long do you spend like playing like all the way through like a four hour session or like an eight hour marathon or? If it's an RPG. Literally, I have to be as quickly as possible or it'll consume my whole life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? But, you know, like Super Mario Galaxy, I usually, you know, just play it in strides. You know? Okay. Two hours, three hours, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, in terms of the things that stop you playing games or uh, make you extend your backlog, uh, a lot of it has to do with how much the game uh, entices you at the very start. Uh, and I guess a lot of it's also to do with whether you know how long the game is beforehand. Um, so I've had like instances of that where in terms of like big RPGs, when I know the game is really, really long and I've started it, I'm like, eh, I I'm going to have to put a lot of time into this and, you know, in, in terms of my schedule and however that works, you know, I might not be able to put that time in. And it might be an effort for me to turn on the system. And I think it's trying to break that barrier between starting up the game and going through it. Because, I mean, the hardest thing when trying to finish off a backlog going through is, like, just the starting of the game and getting back into it is the most difficult thing. Because you're like, oh, I don't remember what was going on. I don't even know what's happening. Um, so that is a big issue, I feel, uh, which which happens quite a lot. And it happened... I mean, it's kind of happening to me now with uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, that's not really to do with... I mean, that's, that's brought into another point of why people stop games uh, is because they get stuck on on them, which happens, I guess, frequently with me, more frequently with both people, because I'm <laughs> terrible at video games. Especially Mario 3. Oh, man, you have no idea. But uh, I, uh, I I, really want to play through Xenoblade, and I know that it has, it's this game with massive scope, and it has loads of you know hidden areas and all this stuff, and you know the landscape's incredible, it looks amazing, and there's so much depth to it. But 
the battle system is something I'm just not really a big fan of. I, I think maybe it has to do with the fact that I'm using the Wii Remote and Nunchuck, which is not the ideal way to play that sort of game. It has classic controller support, and the classic controller is the preferred method of play, but I just don't have a classic controller pro, so I can't really do that. It's something I need to fix. Uh, and the slightly annoying thing is that they don't allow you to use a GameCube pad, because if they did allow the use of a GameCube pad, I'd be on that like a bullet. I mean, mm. GameCube is probably my favorite controller of all time. So I would easily use that pad, and it would be a lot e easier than scrolling through the menus and stuff using the Wii Remote. Because just the fact is there aren't enough buttons on the Wii Remote and Nunjuck combined to handle all the stuff in the game. The camera is so awkward to move around with the Wii Remote because you have to hold one button and then use the... the d-pad to rotate the camera up and down you have to hold it for a long time whereas if i just had a second analog stick it would just do all that functionality instantly it would be a lot easier and i wouldn't really have to bother with that kind of problem but unfortunately i do um and the thing with xenoblade i think is that i got to this boss and it's relatively early in the game like four or five hours in and i've tried to play him like six seven eight times i haven't beaten him and it's just kind of frustrating really and i know that if i went back and grinded i could get through it but it's kind of just this barrier that i'm like yeah i don't really want to spend my time grinding and not really feeling like i'm achieving anything uh as opposed to playing something else where i can just get through the game and you know do it and, and get it done i guess yeah. so but so, uh something i like to bring up real briefly and i didn't interject but uh go, go ahead 100 percent, yeah I agree with you with the Wiimote. It's not the best as like design for the Wii. There was a game like that though. A uh, Monster Hunter Try also came with the uh, classic controller yeah, Pro. I yeah, a very similar game, I guess. To I hated that game while I was trying to use yeah. the Wii mo the Moat because I didn't I didn't I didn't like the controller. I was just like, this is weird and not a fan of it. Is the and, camera controls which are the issue as well? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely it. And it had some weird motion controls I wasn't a fan of. But the second I actually just started, like, I just forced myself to use the classic controller, I realized that the game was not only a lot easier, which, I don't know, I can't really explain it. <laughs> it's been a while since I played that game, but it made everything easier, everything much better. So maybe if you did just get the controller, you know, you go back to it. I feel that that would make a difference, definitely, and I just need to invest in a classic controller pro. Unfortunately, the controllers are relatively expensive. That's just how things work. Uh, but I'm sure I'll, I'll find one eventually for a decent price that I can I can use and, and play. Um, but yeah, Fiverr, what do you think for you turns you off playing games or makes you stop playing games, I guess? Honestly, my biggest issue is that I buy more games and I start them. Um, because for me, I have you know a lot of RPGs, so a lot of games that require a large time commitment. Um, I think one of the shortest RPGs I own is White Knight Chronicles, and I think that's somewhere between 20 and 30 hours. Um, and I've, I've beaten that game. It was actually a really simple game, but and the story was incredibly cliche, but there's just something about that game that made me want to finish it. But for me, it's, it's literally one of those things where I have like gamer ADD, where I'll play a game for a little while and then something new comes along and I jump into that and I play that and something new comes along. So that is where I have my biggest issues, which is why I tend to try and play uh, games that vary up a little bit. Uh, MMO is not really their typically grind fest, but Star Wars is a, an MMO that I've been able to play consistently and, and continue with their story. Because if I get bored with the story, you know, I can go do PvP, I can go do space missions, whatever. Um, League of Legends, I play because every game is different. It's probably the best game for somebody like me who has gamer ADD. Um, and then I play a lot of sports games as well. That They're just something that I can pick up and put down easily. But as far as my RPGs go, uh, it's literally just a sense of I start a game, I play it for a while, and then something shiny catches my eye and I have to go for the shiny. Mm -hmm. mm, right. <laughs> I think uh, genre plays a big role in this as well because it depends on what kind of person you are but certainly for me I love RPGs and I really do play you know a decent amount of them but the problem is taking the time and thinking oh, okay I'm going to a lot this much time to play this RPG and play through and do this and I'm going to grind or whatever whereas something like a platformer is 
is very different for me because I mean platformers uh, bar Mario 3 I find relatively <laughs> uh, easy and I find them very enjoyable and very satisfying because generally the game isn't too long um, there is a sense of achievement after you've beaten levels levels are generally not very long uh, they're very uh, quick to complete and you do get that sense of achievement once you've finished one so you feel like you're moving on with the game as opposed to an RPG where you can just be sitting in one spot for a while and not feeling like you're achieving too much um so i i think that more instantaneous satisfaction is there uh, and that makes a big difference uh, to me as well um so i think it, genre is a big big thing that plays into it um and, and the irony is even though i have gamer add rpgs are my thing though i would hmm. pick an rpg over anything and they of course require the most time and the most dedication and Half the time I play it for like four hours and then I go for a shiny. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, <laughs> but I think the one thing that is specific to me about my backlog and why I play certain games over certain other ones is when I'm playing a game, I feel like I want to be doing something else at the same time. It's this weird thing where I listen to a lot of podcasts and I like listening to music a lot and that kind of thing and watching TV or having... I, I like having some kind of background thing going on while I'm playing a game. Uh, and so I think the difficulty is... Uh, that when I'm playing a console game, my attention has to be wholly focused on the TV and what's going on, especially when I'm at home with a PS3. A game like Uncharted, you need to be fully invested in that, and you need to be, you know, listening to the dialogue and, you know, listening to the music and being able to be fully uh, focused on it. And having something in the background kind of takes you out that experience. Um, so, I mean, it's... I guess a, a bit of a reason why I've uh, taken so long to get through PS3 games because I feel like I could either do a PS3 game and just put time into it and concentrate while you know stupid shit happens around me, or I could pick up my 3DS, play a platformer while I sit on the couch with the TV on, maybe with music on or with a podcast in the background, and not really have to engage too much in you know i mean platformers don't have a story or anything and music is generally uh it's, it's good it's good music sure but i mean it's slightly repetitive i guess um mm. and so for instance something like i mean there are two platformers that i've knocked out really quickly there was uh the two mario land games on the 3ds eShop uh for the game boy so mario land 2 and mario land 3 warrior land and i just basically just ran through those games i stuck on a podcast and played through levels and then when the podcast was done i just put it down uh or i just put on music or i had uh, a tv show in the background while i was playing um and that makes a big difference i think uh i like having to do other things while i play games which is uh it's a bit of a something that i guess inhibits me slightly but that's how i like to play them I, well, I can definitely relate to. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I can definitely relate to that. Playing the podcast, um, I was a very big World of Warcraft guy about a couple years ago, and that's all you did really. When there is giant spans of waiting in queues and just meaningless grinding, and yeah, you really just had to do something else than just stare at your avatar or hitting something. So I can understand that. Not so much anymore. That I, I play most console games. I really just get invested in it. I don't really have anything on, you know. Uh, RPGs, you know, you always got to pretty much pay attention. But handhelds, for some reason, I don't do that, even if it isn't the same genre or even the same franchise. I just leave the TV on or something, you know, just casually do that. Mm -hmm. But pro back to the thing, the probably number one reason I never complete a game is definitely in real life stuff. Like, uh, and, and the fact I'm just, I just feel like I'm wasting so much time invested in this game. Uh, back to the thing I was playing, that Shimigans. Oh, sorry. Shimigans. <laughs> that, that game. Yeah, that game. Uh, it's, I read on a board, like Game Facts or something, you can't beat this game in less than 100 hours. I beat it in a week. Uh, I realized I was wasting too much time with it. And uh, just real life stuff kept getting in the way. So I was like, I just put down the controller. I was like, hey, I'm going to beat this game today and i did it so i was like yeah whew. but yeah that can be a giant uh thing and that, that's the problem with rpgs they're so investing and so rewarding at the same time but it takes a while to get there that's why i feel like a lot of people don't really appreciate the genre and don't really you know have, most of the time finish them mm -hmm. but always i'm on z uh yeah. always the deal breaker there but yeah, yeah. so 
But now to you, Mr. High and Fiber. Mm. Well, for me, ever since the, the seventh grade, what I've wanted to do uh, as, as a dream, as a goal, is I've, I want to be a writer, which is kind of why RPGs kind of speak to me in that sense, where more than see man, shoot man on Call of Duty. <laughs> see man, there's, shoot man, kill man. Yeah, there's, man there's a story. I love to see the, the way... Uh, the story is developed, the character development, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, music is really big for me too, and typically RPGs have really, really good composers. Um, I have a lot of video game soundtracks on iTunes, and I listen to them, you know, on YouTube if I don't own them, and all that kind of stuff. And, and I just feel like a lot of times those kind of things you don't get in non-RPG games. Not to say that they're not good. Obviously, everybody has their own personal tastes. Mine has been toward, geared towards the story and the character and how they kind of mold over the course of, you know, 100 hours, however long I play the game and I get attached to all these things and it helps me develop my own skills as a writer. Uh, I, I've been working on a project since the seventh grade that has been scrapped and redone uh, more times than I can count, but every time I redo it, it gets better and I, I learn a lot from RPGs and stuff. Which is another reason I just stopped playing games, because it's like, oh my god, there's a new store, I have to go play it. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's interesting. So you've got this big writing story project that's been going on for years and years. That's Well, okay, non totally non-gaming related, but uh, when I was 16, I was out living on my own. I had an apartment, and unfortunately I had no cable or TV, um, so what I would do is I would write, and I would write by hand, because I didn't have a computer. And I had written probably about 400 pages, handwritten, uh, of my story. And I left for a few days, and apparently my rent was not taken care of. And my landlord took all of my stuff and basically threw it out. Oh, my God. So mm. I still, to this day, I still have it. But I have the last notebook that's probably got about, you know, 40, 50 pages of my story. That The last 40, 50 pages, so it's like 400 in. Oh shit! And when Jeez. I lost the entire thing, I was just I was so devastated. It took me so long to get back into things. Uh, I ended up writing some other stories instead of the one that I had been working on. But recently, I, I have been sitting down and I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna redo this. I have some fire in me. We'll call it to to put this back up there." You had some fiber but, in you. Yeah, yeah losing 400 <laughs> pages. That when I say 400 pages, I'm talking. 400 handwritten pages a no four less than yeah it, no less than 100 hours worth of stuff and it oh was gone God. and because it was handwritten I had no backup and I was just I was so defeated but thankfully mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting back into things mm -hmm. yeah Jeez. anyway um, <clears throat> I guess to close out the uh, the backlog thing um I think a, a big issue for me as well is the idea of accessibility and the barrier between the handheld as opposed to the console. Um, and I just feel in general that if I want to play something, it's so much easier to go straight to the handheld because it's it's quicker to switch on, quicker to get straight into a game than if I go to my TV, switch on the system, have to get the controller in my hand, have to sit down, have to you know get the sound working and everything, and then put the disc in. It's just more step, you know, and it's the idea of accessibility and you know versus you know that kind of thing. So I generally end up going for more handheld stuff in general. I think I feel I'm more of a handheld player um, just from my youth in general. I played a lot more Game Boy than I did of uh, PS1 or N64 or whatever. So it's something that I kind of feel more drawn to as opposed to the console experience, um, which I guess is why I a lot more of the games I haven't finished are on the console as opposed to the handheld. Um, I feel old now, because I grew up with Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. You grew up with the PlayStation 1. Well, no, well I mean, <laughs> I didn't really get into games until around PS1. My first gaming system my dad bought me, I was around uh, 9 or 10 when I got the PlayStation 1. But my friend uh, always had Nintendo systems, and I kind of resented my dad simply because uh, the PS1 didn't have Pokemon Stadium. And that was like oh. <laughs> the game I wanted, uh, but no, I, the PS1 had fantastic games. I really did enjoy the PS1 a lot. Um, mm. 
But yeah, I mean, that's when I kind of got into games when that happened. My first system was a Game Boy, uh, Game Boy Color, I think. Um, and I mean, that was even relatively late in comparison to most people. So right. so that's kind of what happened there. But yeah. My but, first yeah. console was a NES in 1996, so... Oh you wow! Know, uh, I mean, yeah, my, was, my, parents, my parents were real we cheap. We owned <laughs> we owned a uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, but my first console was a Sega Genesis, and that was mine. And yeah. I loved it, and I only had like four games, but they were the greatest four games ever at the time, anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the idea of accessibility with portable. I guess both of you are much more console guys than portable, so it's not as big of an issue. Um, My thing about portable gaming is it really shouldn't deter me, but I always feel like since you know the, the DS is essentially the only portable system I have, I just always feel that the game I'm playing is inferior to a console counterpart. Mm-hmm. That's not entirely true because there's way there's way better some portable games than console games. But I think that just technology was too different. I have not picked up a 3DS yet, but from what I've seen, I could become a more increasingly mm-hmm. uh, portable gamer <laughs> eventually. But I mean, the 3DS is picking up a lot now. There's lots of appeal to it. There's really good stuff in the eShop. Virtual consoles picking up. There's some really good retail stuff now, uh, and especially like I think the 3DS is has a lot more console esque experiences. Uh, for one, Resident Evil Revelations being on the system is a big pull for lots of people. Um, right. So it's it's moving a little bit more towards that. But I guess if in your situation, if you prefer the more sort of console based stuff, then the Vita is really up your alley because That's that pretty much is thinking. is the system to have if you want to have consoles on the go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I really hope. Uh, apparently, that's been having low sales. I don't really see why, but I really hope it isn't because people think, oh yeah, the Vita sucks. Yeah. That's that's if if the Vita does go away, that just means less games for the people that want them, essentially. It does, yeah. It basically <laughs> yeah, by Vita so. going away eliminates competition with 3DS, which means that there isn't as much you know dedicated development to make things you know competition happen, uh, and stuff kind of goes south from that. Exactly. I guess. However, so, however, okay. the Neo Geo is coming out soon. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> the Neo Geo X. Metal yeah. Slug on the bus. I heard, did you hear the price tag though? I have. Yeah, it's slightly ridiculous. Eight hundred bucks, dude. Little I can get like three PlayStation three. That's <laughs> what, that was the top comment on the video. I can get a Vita, a 3DS, and a hundred games for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, that that could be just be a rumor because that's a little far fetched, but you know. Seems to be relatively good source, so we'll see. See. Time will tell. Yeah, time will tell. Um, but, yeah, I guess that's pretty much the backlog segment uh, in a nutshell. Um, and we, me and Fiverr both have do- stuff to get through. If you, uh, anyone in the stream, you want to, if you have a lot of big backlog and you want to use that site, then go ahead and you can add me on it. I think I'm just MBZ on it, so uh, it'd be cool. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Are we going to do calls? Um, um, we have we an, got one more thing to talk about first, and then we'll jump into some calls. Just to do an update on the calls. You need to, if you want to call in, then you have to add McBoss on Skype. His name is McBoss, just like it is in the uh, the stream. So add him on Skype. Uh, message him your question that you want to ask us, and then he will choose people to bring into the call uh, after that. So if you do want to call in and uh, ask stuff to us, then message McBoss on Skype, and he will sort that out for us, hopefully. So, um, Yeah. Uh, as far as the... Oh, excuse me. As far as the last topic of the day, probably something that you guys might have heard about. Uh, it is the Wasteland 2 Kickstarter, which currently, uh, right now, it is at like $1.2 million dollars which is a lot of money. And for those of you who aren't aware, because I'm pretty sure wait, the original Wasteland is before everybody on this stream's time. So uh, just give a little bit of a background of what Wasteland uh, It's actually before my time. This game came out in 1988. I was born in 1990. But it was the first post-apocalyptic RPG. It was the first game where your decisions mattered. It was a... Um, it was very, very much... You know, a, a DDoS type of type of game where it was just ridiculously in front of its time, and 
ever since then, you know, people want a Wasteland 2. They've been asking uh, Interplay to, to do this. And in fact, Interplay went on to do Fallout 1 and Fallout 2, not Fallout 3 or New Vegas. They were not part of that. But the uh, the first two Fallouts were made because of Wasteland. They couldn't do Wasteland 2. Nobody really wanted it at the time. Um, so they used the, their original games to influence uh, Fallout. And recently they have been continuously being asked for a sequel to a game that came out you know, 24 years ago. And they finally said, you know what, no publisher is, is taking on this job. Why don't we start a Kickstarter? We'll do the double fine standard of things. See if people will be interested in funding it. If we get the money, we'll make it. And we have, like I said, now they're at $1.2 million of their $900,000 goal with 30 days left. So this is now two companies that have gone to Kickstarter in the last month almost to say, hey, you, the consumer, we have an idea. Do you want to be a part of it? Would you uh, be willing to back us? Because we have to do this on our own. And just the incredible number of, of pledges that have been coming out. Um, the numbers right now are almost 24,000 people pledging a total of 1.2, almost $1.3 million. Uh, the Double Fine Kickstarter that finished a few days ago, I think maybe you know, closer to a week at this point, mm -hmm. 87,000 backers. <laughs> they raised 834% of what they wanted. They ended up with $3.4 million, almost $3.5 million. It's just, it was, it's insane. And this is all because of us, the consumers, saying, we want this. I will give you money to do this for me. And it, it's a system that we didn't see in the past. It was always, uh, yeah, the consumer base kind of influenced what we did, but it was always the developers. So, you know, Activision, EA, these are the guys saying, you know, we'll put money to this project, you know, Call of Duty 21 coming out next year. Um Instead of, hey, I want a point-and-click adventure from Double Fine, here's my money. I'll give it to you before the game comes out so I know what I'm investing in, which is really, really cool. Okay, the stream's died. <laughs> it did. The stream has died, but we're going to fix it. But uh, for purposes of the VOD, I'm going to continue stalling for time. And um, just... This is really interesting. If you look at, um, at the pledging, it's $15 or more typically for the Double Fine and Wasteland 2. You're going to get the game DRM-free. The odds are these games are going to be more than $15. So not only are you helping say, you know, I want my input in the gaming world uh, by putting this money out, I'm now getting a discounted price of this game that I've really been looking forward to or, you know, you download more. Uh, obviously, the more money you download, the, the better your reward, whether it's uh, in-game stuff. In fact, uh, if I pull up the Wasteland 2, uh, if you pledge $10,000, you get everything prior. You get to go to a, uh, an exclusive party. You get a shrine in the game erected in your honor. You get 50 copies of the game to give to people. And there is a exploded blood sausage which is all capital letters. They're really trying to push this thing. I'm not really sure what it is, but uh, obviously there's all of these kind of things that are enticing you to put your money out. And, you know, this is now becoming the, the era where it's for the gamer, by the ga gamer, which you didn't really see as much in the past. And now that the stream is back, I can stop talking for time and mm -hmm. try and get these guys to put on the matter. But I, I think that Kickstarter is going to change the game a lot. Uh, it has been ridiculous, the response from the fans to these, these developers going up and saying, hey, you want this? Because, I mean, by them going to corporations and stuff, they deny them, they get denied. And by having – the internet is such a massive tool these days and being able to utilize it and interact with the fans via Twitter and all that thing and, you know, just – Generally, getting people to fund things for you is something that never would have considered in the past, and 
by happening now, it may well just change things completely uh, for independent developers and just people in general who want to get a game up and are not green-lighted to do so by the publisher or, or whoever. Um, so it's going to make uh, a big difference, I think, um, to, to what's going to happen in terms of game development generally. So, it's hmm. a very good point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I think that... Uh, I think what ha- what's going to happen with the Double Fine one is that they're going to... Basically, everyone who's donated is uh, essentially a producer, as it were, on the game. And I think they'll probably have something in the in the game thanking everyone somehow. I don't know how they're going to get 87,000 names onto the game credits, but maybe there'll be like an achievement if you sit through the game credits or something. <laughs> well, the, the thing with that is when you when you donate... Like I said, if you donate fifteen dollars, you're getting the game. Yeah, and it's going yeah. to be a discounted price. As far as I'm concerned, if you put fifteen dollars out, all you are entitled to is the discounted copy of the game. Because yeah, it's nice that you're putting out money, but you're not really influencing the the game. Obviously, when eighty seven thousand people download or donate fifteen dollars, it becomes a big thing. But in terms of uh, being an actual backer or, or having something in the game in your honor, it's typically, you know, the the higher rewards. You know, I, I think maybe, uh, I think using Wasteland, I think it's like $1,000 or more mm-hmm. um, where you finally actually get something to say, hey, thank you, and they'll probably put those names in there, mm-hmm. uh, and they'll probably just have a general thank you to everybody who donated, which is really all I think you're entitled to unless you're putting out the big money, the 1000 yeah. the 10000 all of that kind of stuff. Right. And, of course, there are people who do that. We were talking about that before the show started. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I don't know, it's kind of a big thing that's kind of been going around with Kickstarter now. It's this general mindset is, well, I donated for this. I feel entitled to something. You got a game probably for 25% of the retail value. If it's a $60 game, mm-hmm. I don't really care what you think you deserve. You got a, a, almost a free game. Mm-hmm. So quit your bitching is exactly. the way I view it. <laughs> yeah, gamer entitlement. Gamer entitlement has been a big thing recently with the Mass Effect 3 ending shenanigans, but I don't think that talking about that's a very good idea. There's just too much bullshit about it, Mass Effect 3 thing. Just a quick thing on that. I believe Bioware has actually made a response to they that. They have made a response, and it seemed I, very... I kind of uh, skimmed through it, and it kind of seemed like a nonchalant, like, we, we know you're talking about it kind of thing. Yeah, I think they, wa- they want to wait for more people to have experienced the game and played through and finished the game before they uh, announce anything about what they're going to be doing about the situation. But, I mean, kind of, unfortunately, it does involve Mass Effect. The, the idea of the gaming consumer kind of trying to be heard. They have a $50,000 charity right now. Uh, every penny that gets donated goes to Child's Play, and it's them saying, we're going to raise this money to make you aware we want a new ending. And it's not exactly a Kickstarter, but it's in a similar fashion, and it's kind of started because of this whole double fine uh, and all of these kind of things where you know, maybe our money is is worth more to you than our mouths, and this is $50,000 of people who already bought your game, and potentially uh, there's people in there who haven't purchased your game, but, you know, if you go to Reddit or any gaming website, there's just tables being flipped because of the ending of Mass Effect 3, mm-hmm. and they're like, well, I'm not going to buy this game, and, you know, unfortunately, I bet you half of those people pirated the game, but it's one of those or things where... Or watch the video, yeah. Like, personally, I think it's great that the consumers are, are standing up and saying, you know, we don't approve of what you've done, you know, especially in a series like Mass Effect where that is, you know, 100, 200, you know, however many hours you put into it trying to unlock everything, all the DLC that you've bought and, and went through. And, and to have all of that time just feel like it was, I'm sure people think it's worth or worthless to them, are wasted or, or whatever term you want to use because that ending experience was just a huge letdown, mm-hmm. which I haven't played Mass Effect 3. I'm one of those people who are saying, uh, I don't approve of your standards. I'm not backing your game in any way until these things are fixed. But uh, right. how, however people want to get involved, I, I think it's great. You know, Kickstarter, great thing. 
Uh, of course, Kickstarter is loving these as well because they take a percentage of the money that is made. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the traffic, <laughs> so, the traffic to their site is amazing. When, when you think about it, there there is, I think if you did the math, about $6 million between two Kickstarters, okay? Um, even if you, they took 1% of $6 million, that's still... Uh, <laughs> Doing them, that's still sixty thousand dollars in your pocket. That's yeah. okay with that. Like, mm. uh, I just think that's fantastic. It's phenomenal. It's very very. Um, but yeah, I I really think that it's going to change things as long as people are willing to pay every time. And I think that it's important to appeal to either nostalgia, like uh, I mean, both of these companies really have done, because they're, they're appealing to old school people with the click, point and click adventures with Double Fine, and they're appealing to people who are fans of the original Wasteland. Um, so I think that's got a big part to play, and mainly people who will be donating to this will be adults who have a disposable income and are able to pay for these things, uh, and it's because those were the people who played these games when they were younger. Uh, and there's also just that thing of people just being like, yeah, this is cool. I don't know anything about it, but people are donating, so I want to donate. I want to be a part of this. And hey, you know what? If I donate this much, I get the game anyway, so I might as well do it. So it really builds momentum in that way uh, and uh, just makes these things massive and a lot bigger than people thought that they were going to be. So And yeah, and it's uh, like I mentioned before we did the show, Minecraft was the same system, just done differently. Minecraft was never going to be done. They were broke. They said, you know what? Let's let's let people buy into the alpha. We'll listen to their feedback, and, and we'll see if this is a game that we can finish, and you know become popular. And obviously, they've done that. Uh, <laughs> YouTube did a huge thing for them as well. But uh, the whole putting out money before a project is finished, or now in nowadays before it's even started, um, it, it's really really cool that they're actually caring about what the consumer is saying with rather than just the publisher and especially these days when we all know EA and Activision terrible companies and we should all avoid them but unfortunately they're the two biggest publishers out there so yeah they're kind of hard to can't. avoid especially with yeah. EA because EA Sports uh, just EA Games you know there's so many divisions of EA that it's almost impossible to avoid them entirely. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, what was I was going to say something very good, and then I forgot. So go me and my brain. <laughs> um, uh, I just completely lost it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> well, this is great. Quickly, slow for time. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, but yeah, Kickstarter, very good, and stuff, and things, and I don't know what I was going to say. Anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, that is, I think, the the segment that we are, we're going to yeah, finish I think, there. Yeah, I think as well. Um, um, said enough. Hopefully. We oh, have- no, I've got it. I remember. Oh, Go oh, me. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I was just thinking how many people are going to have double standards with this kind of thing when reviews for these two games start coming out. And mm. if the games are not critically well received or they're very average and are people going to be having double standards say, oh, I put all my money into this and uh, this is a terrible game and this is bad and, you know, what would happen in that scenario if the game comes out and it's universally panned? I mean, what would that mean, really, for the Kickstarter thing? Right, Here, that's a good here's point. Here's the problem with that. Uh, you look at a site like Metacritic, is it's a bad site. I'm sorry, it just is. It's You have the people, the, the quote-unquote professionals, doing the reviews, and obviously they're going to get incentives from companies to not totally slander their games. Uh, the complete opposite, you're going to have, you know, haters of those games just completely bash it. Uh, unfortunately, I have to use Mass Effect 3 as an example. The the reviewers, the professional reviewers, gave that game like a 90, and, and they thought it was fantastic. There were fans who gave that thing a zero just because of the ending, and they were mad. So it suddenly had, you know, it... it ended up being like, you know, a 34, and then deleted a lot of the trolling comments. The thing shot up to like 90. Reviews are extremely unreliable, especially from, if you look at like IGN or things like that, Machinima, a lot of times they're they're not going to say what they really feel. 
uh, I know that Giant Bomb is one that's typically pretty good, but unfortunately, for for a lot of the cases, it's who's paying me money to say this about their game. Right, right. right. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how that works and how that comes out in the end, but it's a little bit of a tipping point because they have a lot of pressure on them now. They've got $3 million. Uh, what are they going to do with it? Are they going <laughs> to use it to make the best game ever or are they just going to... I don't know what, the, what will happen, but I mean, it's a lot of pressure on their shoulders now to do so. So we'll see what the outcome is in however many months it takes them. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on, I guess, we are going to hopefully get some people calling in and asking us things. Uh, which McBoss will hopefully do. So if you have asked McBoss a question, uh, then he will bring one of you in, I think, uh, and stuff, and we can see and if that works. <laughs> I don't know, let's hope it does. Um, so if you, again, if you want to ask us a question on the podcast, uh, talk to us then, go to Skype and add McBoss. He has the same name as is in the stream chat and ask the question to him via Skype messaging and he will add you if he believes that it is a good question and that we can answer it. So we will uh, we'll do that and uh, while we wait I guess um, Oh, 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 uh, oh. Yeah, somebody said you have the I have the, the power. Console. Oh, yeah, that's so. why the stream was dropping. The power is yours. Oh, it we have be. we have Nagi. Unfortunately, <laughs> on the on the plus side, because you are hosting hey, it, the fact yeah, that me and Johnny, <laughs> you all are right, Nagi. Hey. Hello, what's up? Hey, Hello. Nubs. Hey, Fiverr. Hi. Hey, Nagi. How's it going? How's it? I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Well, it's, okay. Let's just be. It's not being. It's not, just not being around the bush. And my question is. What are your favorite systems, and what, and what do you like about them more than other systems? Yes. Favorite systems of all time? Yes, and what do you like about them more than others? Okay. Uh, I guess nostalgia plays a big part in this, really. Um, well, well, I was going to say, like based, on your, like, based on, like, the best games that you played on them, but... Okay. okay. Um, like, like, the nostalgia factor, there's just... I'm like, the, in my opinion, Nostalgia has the problem of it in, in, in like, like, like well. it, it can't carry your favorite system, in my opinion. Okay. You know? Right. All right. Continue, please. I'll tell you flat out on my. I can give you my top three, and I'll tell you why they're my top three. Mm -hmm. Number one, the Super Nintendo. I just always loved it. I thought the games were fantastic. I spent more time playing Chrono Trigger and uh, Final Fantasy II, which Final Fantasy like six, whatever, um, on the Super Nintendo than probably any other franchise in terms of hours done. I thought they had some of the greatest games of their time. Uh, and just it was and it was incredibly simple. It was, you know, there were six buttons on and then your control pad. There's not, you know, seven analog sticks and twelve <laughs> buttons. It's very straightforward. You knew what you're getting into. Number two, the Dreamcast, because without the Dreamcast I would never have gotten to play games like Jet Set Radio, Skies of Arcadia, Fantasy Star. And he dies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I well, while we wait for um, Fiverr, how about you, Nubs? Okay. I, I think that I'm generally obviously drawn more to portable systems, as I've said earlier on. Um, and I think the one system that really stands out for me amongst the rest is the GBA. Um I know that the GBA had a lot of ports on it and there weren't that many original games, but I feel that the original games that were on the GBA were some of the best games I've ever played. Things like the Fire Emblem, the uh, GBA ones, both of them. Uh, There's Metroid a port of Future. Fire Emblem? Pardon? There's a port of Fire Emblem for the Game Boy Advance? I've got a port, no. I'm, I'm talking about the original games on the Game Boy Oh, oh okay. But um, <laughs> both, both Fire Emblem games, actually there are three Fire Emblem games. One, The first one was the Japanese exclusive, and I'm actually playing through a fan-translated ROM of it at the moment. It's that, I've played that one so as well. difficult. It's fucking difficult. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Pirate. If you take... The, I know, everyone's a pirate. Oh. <laughs> to, to be fair, though, if you're playing a game translated, it's not the same as um, going out and downloading no, it's, it's not the same thing because it's never going to come out here and this is the only way i'll be able to play it essentially so i'm playing uh, i mean 
if you compare that Fire Emblem to the one that came after it, for the American one, there is a massive difficulty difference, a huge difficulty difference, mainly because it was the sixth Fire Emblem game to come out in Japan, and so the Japanese knew what they were doing in terms of Fire Emblem stuff. They were like, okay, this is fine. We'll just give you these giant maps and throw ten reinforcements every turn from each side of the map, which is like, ah, this is, uh, this is bad. <laughs> I can't handle this. So it's taken me a while to get through that game, simply because the difficulty is just that much higher than I've been used to in the other ones. Um, but yeah, Fire Emblem, both those games on the system. Metroid Fusion, probably my favorite game ever, is uh, a really, really big uh, big influence on me. Um, I mean, the Pokemon games on the GBA were good as well. Uh, there's, I mean, there's lots of weird stuff I had on the GBA. I had this uh, Jackie Chan game, which was like uh, a side-scrolling <laughs> beat-em-up. It was based on the Jackie also, Chan game. Um... Weren't there, like, Harry Potter games with the Game Boy Advance, like a Quidditch game oh, yeah, as well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there, were, yeah. there were a lot of Harry Potter games. I, I think I had a Game Boy. Like Harry Potter game. RPGs, weren't they? Yeah. So out of place. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I love all those games on the GBA. I think uh, that, and then I think the DS, like, follows quickly after it. But um, definitely it is the handhelds for me. Um, it's just the way that I play games in general and the portable experience I just prefer uh, a lot of the time. So... That's, uh, I guess those are my favorite systems. All right, uh, I guess I'm next. Uh, this sort of turned into a top three, so I guess I'll make my top three too. Uh, this, I've actually learned over the years, isn't so much about nostalgia, but the Nintendo 64 at the time just had so much third-party like benefit. Like, you know, okay, there's Nintendo and stuff, but there's also Rare, and there was also the third-party and stuff. That really made the system, because the fact that the PlayStation 2, yes, it did have superior software, superior pretty much everything but when you really think about it outside metal gear and final fantasy there wasn't really much on the system oh and crash bandicoot but you know crash. and that, that's what <laughs> really just like even to today that makes it so such a good console there's a lot of innovations that's a lot there were a lot of games just like you know got stuff from because it's the whole 3d enhancement and the fact that there's a lot of really bad N64 games you can make fun of, too, is another right. fun aspect. Conker's Bad Fur Day was hands down the greatest one. It was very, very good, Conker's Bad Fur Day, indeed. Right, right, very good. I think, I think the most significant thing about the N64 was that there weren't a lot of games, but the games that were on it were fantastic. There were yes, very, very solid games on it, so... Very, very true. Um, I guess second <laughs> I'd have to pull from Nubs' uh, um, tree is that the Game Boy Advance... As a kid, really just like, whoa, like this is the gaming future. Because, you know, there was, at the same time, yeah, a lot of variety. And as a kid, this isn't really so much as nostalgia, but I didn't realize that half the games on there were remakes. So to me, right. they were completely... Yeah, because, I mean, if you hadn't played the Super Nintendo, then you wouldn't know right. that half of them were old games. Yeah, and that had also a lot of connectability with stuff. And it was just, at the time, there was no competition, really. Because the PSP was still far away, and, you know, it was just... It was, it was. There was no other handheld at the time. It was the exactly. only one. I mean, and that's. Yeah. You could say that kind of hindered it since there wasn't a lot of, you know, competition, so they didn't really innovate much. Yeah. But I that just forced developers to really concentrate on that, which really sold the system. And third, I really got to say PlayStation Two because there's so many good games. You got Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy. For you, you can just talk on forever. And yeah. the fact that ten years from now, I'm still discovering stuff like. Uh, Tales of Abyss and crap like that. That's just PS2, a right? crazy. Yeah, PS2. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, actually okay. a Yo, dude, PS remake of should... Tales of Abyss, okay. which is just a recently. What you played. should go check out is a game called Onimusha. It's it's amazing. Onimusha. I've heard of that before. For the PS2, it's like hey, this. Get this four games for it. It's it's one of the best things I've ever played in my life. Honestly, For I'll take that up, <laughs> Mr. Nagi. <laughs> but all right, that's uh, my answer. So, what about you? Um, um I, I'm gonna have to say the GameCube, the PS2, and the PS1. Okay. Just, right. Like, like, just because, like, for me, it has my best franchises and my and like and the best games on it for me. Mm -hmm. That's really it. You know? right. The GameCube yeah. was definitely. I mean, I said yeah. earlier, but the GameCube controller is my favorite controller of all time. I love it. It's awesome. I am gonna say the the Dreamcast controller. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh. I love it. It's, it's awesome. Oh. I've always been a PS2 controller guy. I don't Dual, know. The DualShock is a solid. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I really don't think they're any improve on that ever. 
Okay. Like, just just out of curiosity, where did I DC when I was going through I my list? Remember. I don't remember. Right, well, I'll just quickly I'll give you the the cliff notes. Number one, Super Nintendo. Number two, Dreamcast. Number three, Game Boy Advance. Hmm. Okay. So Game Boy Advance for, for three things. One, Golden Sun. Two, Mega Man Battle Network. Three, Fire oh. Emblem. Oh, Golden Sun. That's the Sun. reason it makes yes. my top three. Golden Mega Man Battle Network. Thank you. It's good. And then PS2 is number four because I didn't actually own one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Also, also, no, I forgot the CDI. It's an amazing system. Oh, dear God, I'm going to kick you out right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, thanks, Nagi, for uh, okay, calling. Well, we, we can probably get you on a get, uh, as a guest sometime as well. So. Okay. All right. All right. Well, See you. Okay. Cheers. CDI. <laughs> okay. Game Gear. <laughs> okay, Game Gear. so um, if we have someone else to bring in, we can just... Uh, yeah, the Game Gear, man. Let's help with we that. talked about that last time. We're okay. not gonna get into it. <laughs> Stupid Game Gear. I, I think the Game Gear uh, six double eight batteries. What is this shit? That's like eight dollars, man. <laughs> it should be. That should be some more um, uh, games coming out for 3DS and Game Gear sometime soon. I think. I'm not sure. I, it was supposed to come out, but it's not out in Europe at the moment. I'm not sure if it's out in America. I'm not sure. Uh, wasn't it supposed? Yeah, it was supposed to come out on Thursday. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Who? Uh, there's another guy. You can bring him in. Okay, Fart Master Man. Here we go. Hello. Yo, how's it going there, Fire? Hello. 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 Hi. How are you doing? Hi. I'm doing pretty good, Nubs. I'm doing pretty good. Okay. So what's your what's your question for us then? Um. Okay. Let me pull it up. Bro. Um. Okay. Did you guys grow up any playing any sports games growing up? Like I grew up playing SSX and like what games did you play growing up? Sports stuff. Okay. Growing up. It, I, mean, I grew just up any in the games, NFL really. Blitz era. So, oh, okay. All right. Um, obviously, I grew up with with the Maddens, and uh, before they got bought out, the uh, the 2K franchise. But for the most part, it was the NFL Blitz, NBA Jam. Those were the the games when I was younger, as I grew up. And then, of course, Madden kind of took over that, and FIFA, of course, and all of those <laughs> those games. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I played uh, lots of football games when I was younger. Uh, it's the main sort of sporting thing that uh, I played. So I had FIFA 2000 on the PlayStation, which I still crack out sometimes now, even to this day, because it's just so much fun. It's it's a really easy game. The AI is fucking horrible. It's <laughs> so bad. But I, I love just running through it and destroying the AI completely and winning like 15 nil it's just a lot of fun <laughs> i don't know why i just feel like i am just destroying the game and <laughs> the ground uh, but that that is a hell of a fun game uh, and then i had another game called this is football which was uh, it was all right oh. it wasn't as good as uh, as fifa um but it was an interesting game i think i got that when i got my playstation um i this never really i never really had any uh Base sport, not base. Well, I wouldn't have had because you know that's American and they didn't bring those out here. <laughs> but, um, no, I never had any like Tony Hawk or SSX kind of things. I uh, I did play SSX at my friend's house. And I really enjoyed it on the PS2. Um, we had. Yeah, like, it, uh, it, it's a really really solid game. Like I recently bought the new one mm-hmm. and I've just been playing it nonstop and it's just a really solid game. I. Recommend it for just about everyone. Is that it's, SSX Blur? That's the new one. No, no, it's the new SSX 2012 that just got released. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, a couple th- weeks ago. Is that on uh, 360 and PS3 then? Yeah, 360 and PS3. Okay, I might have to check that out then because yeah, I it's... did enjoy the uh, SSX on PS2 when I played it with my friends. Uh, I was never really big into the whole Tony Hawk or when it came out the Sean White franchise, yeah, but that's... SSX was was okay. I remember playing that. Uh, I don't think it'd be something I'd go pick up new, but oh, um, pick it up new. But I mean, well, I mean, like I don't think I'd go pick up the 2012 well, one unless, of course, I got it. You know, five. I mean, 10 it was, bucks. It, it's made by EA, so I mean, you have to buy it new, or you have to pay for the online pass. Oh, true. Like, <laughs> the online is really, really like it, it's really incorporated with like geotags and the just about everything. Like everything is incorporated online. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I I never had that or Tony Hawk's. Um, I did have on the PlayStation this one demo for a off-road biking 
game, which was awful. <laughs> and I played the demo over and over because I couldn't be bothered to go and actually get a proper game. Um, but yeah, I was. I think I was generally limited to football games as it was. Uh, there was on the GameCube. I played a WWE game, um, which was a lot of fun. It was back called, then. It would have been the WWF. I think it might have. <laughs> uh, it was X. It was called X8. I think I might have it in my. No, I don't have it in my drawers at home. Um, but that was one of the game GameCube games that I had. That's a lot of fun. Uh, not as good as um, some of the N64 ones. I know, like No Mercy Fizz is a big fan of the N64 games. So uh, that uh, was interesting. And there was also probably my favorite sports game is a game on the GameCube called Red Card, which is I streamed a bit of it if, uh, when I was doing some GameCube streaming. Um, but that game is basically uh, uh you this crazy it's just freaking going around as dolphins and aliens and playing for what? <laughs> moves i think you saw me uh it, it's <laughs> off the that. rails you basically it's like uh you have these moves like it's kind of like the strikers games the mario games with the power ups and everything um you basically mm-hmm. have a meter which you charge up and then you can like do a super punch you just basically punch people oh in God. the face in the middle of the field <laughs> <laughs> the goal, like, a dolphin punch <laughs> yeah it's it's a very good football game and it's a lot of fun so i would recommend- i don't know i'll have to look into it i might Pick yeah. it up. Or I, I'll, I'll look for it on Amazon. I've never played an American football game in my life because I don't understand what the fuck is going on in that game, and <laughs> they never come out. Well, actually, they do come out here, the Madden games, but i just never been interested because I have no fucking clue what's happening. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've never really been into Madden that much. I just, like, it's eh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, is, is Fiber back, or is he... No, he died. No, he died. He's here. He exploded. Okay. He's busy, so... So, uh, Johnny, did you talk about this? Um, not really. I've... There's only one game I ever played that was actually even sports-related, because I realized at a very young age, around four, I will always suck at sports, no matter how hard I try. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I can't think of the name of it, but it was, like, baseball, but it was, like, kid versions of, like, famous baseball Oh, Backyard Baseball. That's it. Oh, my God. Sports franchise, yeah. I love that game to death. It was kind of like That's Smash Bros shit. meets sports. It was, it was so broken. Like I just, I just loved it because there's so many things <laughs> you could abuse. Like uh, I remember there was like the kid in the wheelchair that was like politically correct. He was like the fastest <laughs> guy ever. Like, home run like crazy. Well, that's not <laughs> fair. He had wheels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> saying it, but like the black kid was always like the best at everything. He was like, you picked him first. Like every single time. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I never really got Madden either, or in it. I never played a hockey. Don't you know, never played much of anything. But yeah, mm-hmm. back up, back to the kids was definitely legit. I don't know. I just I grew up with the PS2. I mean, like my dad brought home a PS2 one day, and he was like, "Oh hey, we got SSX for it," and I was like, "Yay!" And That's then, cool. yeah. I mean, that was the game that I grew up playing. I didn't play any other games for the most part. I played SSX, Tricky, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Because I was like four at the time when Tricky came out, and it was just awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, so... I think that did Fiber get cut off at all in this one? (laughs) I did. I I got cut off like eight times, but... um, I'm pretty sure my what games I played was fine so okay. all right well thank you very much for calling in for the question all right. and uh, no we'll uh, we'll bring someone else in so all right all right see ya later man okay so there we go um if we have some more people then we can uh get mcboss if you if you still want to call in and you have not done so yet then you add mcboss on skype that is m c b a w s e as he is in the chat so you can do that add him on skype uh, message him to be added to the call and he will go ahead and do that and you can ask us a question and also interact with us in general so general what do toasters toast nagi well they toast bread they toast bread, indeed. indeed. <laughs> indeed. That, is, that is a true question. All right. um, they make toast out of bread. They create toast. Mm. They, they, uh, they shape it. Nope. 
Do we have our next caller? I think so. Uh, what's up, guys? Hey, hey what's, what's going on? on? Hey, Ben, how's hey. it going? It's going pretty good. Uh, my name's El Guapo right. Skills, and my question is, um, what do you think about the new Kid Icarus games coming out for the 3DS? Because I know that there was one on the uh, GBA and on the SNES, and so how do you feel about those? Really? Uh, well, no, the, the Kid Icarus games were on the NES and the Game Boy, I believe. With the, oh, yeah. So right. it was quite a long time ago. It was uh, mm-hmm. at least like 11 or 10 years, the last Kid Icarus game. Uh, and at this point, I really don't think that you can say it's got anything to do at all with those games, yep. apart from just the general theme of it being Kid Icarus and the enemies being similar. But the game itself is completely different. So it's, they're basically using the franchise as kind of nostalgia fodder for people. Um but it it does uh, it does look like it's going to be uh, a very different game to what those original ones were. And I actually have the 3D classics on my 3DS, the um, Kid Icarus, because you had to register two 3DS games uh, at the Nintendo Club, whatever, online, and mm-hmm. that's what I did. And I got my free code to download 3D Kid Icarus, and it is. Um, I think it's built on the Metroid engine, the original NES Metroid engine, and uh, it is very, very fucking difficult, especially for someone like me who's <laughs> bad at old games. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I've got about, like, five minutes into the first level, and I die, like, every time, so... Ouch. I'd just like yeah, to point out, I just quickly interject here, mm-hmm. MVZ, it's saying he's bad at games built in the time when gamers were really men. <laughs> now, now they're basically holding your hand through everything. It's like skip along fairies. I know. And yeah. Just, you know, that that. Something, but uh, when I was when I was in, when I was in first grade, and uh, I played the, the Super Mario, the Super Mario Bros. Three, and I beat it in two weeks. So. <laughs> okay. Zed, oh, good luck. Makes right. you feel bad. That was my question. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I I think Kid Icarus looks really really good. Um. It, it's really starting to appeal a lot more to me now. I did get the chance to play it. I went to a 3DS event before the 3DS came out, and I did go and play a demo of the Kid Icarus game, um, both on the hard and the normal difficulty. And uh, So they had two levels available, basically, and it really does look outstanding on the system. It looks amazing. Um, graphically, it's one of the most... Uh, best looking games on the system definitely for sure uh, and I think the 3D helps a lot with that as well I think the 3D in general uh, in, in terms of uh, graphical enhancement is kind of like what HD is it's like just a graphical enhancement I mean it, it's helped with depth and stuff sure but there's only one game where it's really helped which is Super Mario 3D Land but in, in general it's like a graphical enhancement and it definitely makes the game look a lot better um, but it, it does play a lot like the the flying segments are a lot kind of sin and punishmenty, and um, it the one thing that I think lots of people are going to be annoyed about and lots of people have complained about is the fact that you have to use the stylus control to center your aim and everything instead of being yeah. able to use the circle pad pro. Yeah, which is uh, I don't know. Um, about that and how that's going to factor into it but I've heard a lot of positive re- thing, things about it, people are reviewing it at the moment and I follow you know, people, uh, reviewers uh, quite closely as they kind of tweet st- stuff about the game um, and I've been hearing impressions about it on podcasts in, in general and people seem to really enjoy it like quite a lot so I think that We'll be able to get over the barrier of it being you know, breaking your hand and giving you arthritis um, so you know, it should be a good game and um, right. just another way to get carpal tunnel. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, what do you think about right. Icarus? Have you got any um, thoughts on it so far? Me? Yeah. Uh, I think it looks really good. I'm excited for it, but uh, also it's kind of cool because I think it draws in an older generation. Because I remember I played it because I like all the, my uh, cousins gave me all their stuff, mm-hmm. and then. Um, I know my little brother who has a 3DS wants to play it, but he has no idea that there was a game. There was a game before it, so right, right, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. pretty cool. I guess it does appeal to both crowds because it looks really fucking cool for the people who don't yeah. know what it is, and for the people who don't know what it is, they're like, oh, cool, that was that game from like ten years ago. So and the yeah, brawl from ten years ago. Yeah, yeah more. more, that's, more. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the cool thing about Brawl was that they built a character from the ground up, and due to the popularity of that game. I guess you can argue it's not all brawl, but it did make him. It's a like, big people wear the character. 
It's also yeah, a lot no. of uh, media outlets pushing it because I know IGN had a big push behind them saying that a Kid Icarus game is coming on the Wii, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It will happen. Um, so I mean, they they didn't they say that during the press conference at E3 last year as well. Oh, yeah, they, they they've been saying it for a long time. Like they confirmed it. Like I don't know what they did, but there's... I'm pretty sure Nintendo said they're gonna do uh, Kid Icarus on the Wii U for sure. And then they shortly after when they were talking about the new Smash Brothers mm-hmm. that is going to be like mm-hmm. somehow cross between the 3DS and the Wii U. I haven't whole... heard anything about there's... Kid Icarus on the Wii, but I can confirm the brawl. There's, there's, that's completely false. There's been nothing about the Wii U uh, Kid Icarus at all. Nothing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's oh, well. a 3DS game. So that's, I'm pretty sure okay. that's completely false. Uh, if I could add something to the um, whole Kid Icarus thing, that Okay, there's this game that came out a while ago, Metroid Prime Hunters, and yeah. back around that age, I was a big Metroid fan and really looking forward to this game. Like I was just like all over it. Mm-hmm. Stylus broke that game; it was unplayable mm-hmm. for the most part because they did not yeah. keep it correctly. Yeah. That's kind of making me hesitant to want to buy it, but at the same time, it, they are kind of different genres. It's an on rail shooter versus mm-hmm. an adventure game, so yeah. I th- yeah, I think it could work with that, but at the same time, I'd much prefer a dual analog stick, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like Donkey Kong Country Returns in a way. You know, why would you shake a stick when you can press a button? <laughs> exactly, so, exactly. Fun. They should have mapped that to a button, but oh well, that's how it goes. Oh well. Yeah, still a good game. Anyway, so. All right, thanks for having me on, guys. All right, awesome. Oh, thanks for showing Thank up. You. Good question. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, if we have any more, then we can. Uh, Get more people in. Otherwise, uh, we can just continue. I think, time, I think we have time for time. one or two more. Yeah, if there are more people. Again, if you want to call in, <laughs> add McBoss on Skype. He has the same name as he has in the chat. He is fucking awesome because he's doing this for us like a, like a true man. Like a true manager he is. Living up to his name. Boss manager. All those McManager. Things. McManager. <laughs> oh my god. We'll give him a professional sounding title. He is the community liaison. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. These, that is the, that's the word. I've got Ferris calling me. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I should just randomly add Ferris in here. He's just sitting there. I don't think he realizes that we're streaming right now. But there we go. Um, otherwise, let's just talk about something for time to store. <laughs> uh oh. How about uh, those ponies? Uh, there's been another game that I've been playing. Um, there's a question on the the uh, stream chat, and unfortunately the person doesn't have Skype. It is Shard717 asking if any of us have played Kingdoms of Amal or Reckoning. I personally have. I don't know if either of these guys have, but um, that is a game that I was really excited about. I have heard about the DLC. It was probably one of the first games with DLC that I will buy in a very, very long time. Um, the in fact, the only game I've ever bought with DLC was Dragon Age, and of course, when I bought Dragon Age Origins, it was already in the game because I got the that version of it, the gold, whatever it is. Um, but Kingdoms of Amalur is probably something I will buy the DLC for. It's a really fun game. Yeah, I, I I'm very interested in it. It's something that <clears throat> I guess strikes me as more interesting than something like Skyrim. Um, I'm not really someone who would be invested in a game like Skyrim, but I think Amala looks a lot more shiny and prettier, and it's a lot more bright, and I've heard a lot of good things about the combat system, uh, which I'm not really a big fan of what the combat system works like in Skyrim, so um, I guess that's something that makes it a bit more appealing to me. Uh, I've also heard things about the PS3 version being a bit gimped at the moment, so I'm going to wait until that gets fixed, because... Uh, I don't want to play a gimped version of a game, especially that happens a lot on PS3, so uh, hmm. we'll, we'll see about that. Well, me, I've never even heard of this game at all. Like, just never heard of it. I don't know if it's for PC. Uh, it's it's really cross-platform. All right, well, I, I um, only the have the PC, Wii. The, the PC port, the camera angles can be a bit annoying at times, which is how I play it. Um, my biggest issue with it is, A, there's no... Um, zoom in, zoom out features. Uh, the other thing is there's no jumping. I would pay $15 DLC to have the space bar allow me to jump, but um, there's just little tid 
did, like, I'm being nitpicky with it. Mm. And it does seem like we have another question caller person, so... Hello? Pass it in the call. Hello? Can't hear anything. Hello, hello. Oh, there we go. Hello. Hello. Hi, who are you? Do you want to introduce hello. yourself? Uh, I am Helen. Um, I am Digitech Wire in the stream. Oh, okay, awesome. Very cool. Um, what is your question? So my question for you guys is, are there, is, is there anything that, um, in a game that will have you, like, make, like, make you want to buy it? Like, say, like, like I know some people who buy a game because of graphics or because of the gameplay. Like, for me personally, um, I played Fire Emblem, and, um, I liked that sort of gameplay, and that was how I was introduced to Final Fantasy Tactics. And so I was wondering if you guys had anything like that that, um, I don't know. So yeah, the basis for us basically, what makes us decide what games we're going to buy, I guess. Um, And I guess it's a variety of factors. Um, uh, A lot of it being due to what your own gaming tastes already are. I mean, for me, if there's a good platformer, I am straight on it and I want to get that. Um, if there's a really good, you know, strategy game that has a similar thing to Fire Emblem, stuff like that, I'm I'm on it straight away. Uh, but stuff which I'm not too sure about, I generally go by reviews, and I generally go by what other people that I know who already have the game say. Uh, a lot of um, stuff that I buy is due to, you know, people who I know who have the game and and they uh, recommend it to me or whatever. Um, and so I guess that's uh, a big influencing factor. But otherwise, I just kind of go on my own instinct uh, a lot of the time. Um, mm. And if people say that it's, it's like this and I already like a game like that, then that's generally how I pick things up, I guess. All right. Um, if it's a newer game, yeah, I usually look at a review. But if I'm trying to buy like a uh, PS2 game, for instance, this is kind of like, I guess, a, a very weird tactic. But I kind of firmly believe that most games are only as good as their final bosses. So um, I just I just uh, spoil the game for myself. Look up the final boss fight. It has cool music, looks really fun, and is wor- looks like it's worth the time to invest. I'll probably buy it. I've just been like that, and that's, I don't know. That's probably weird, and I probably shouldn't do it because that usually just wants me to get to the final boss fight most of the time. But mm-hmm. that's usually what I do, and it's worked out for me so far. So <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, think... I lost the stream oh. again. Uh. And... <laughs> Uh, Go ahead, continue talking. I think, I'm just letting MVZ. Uh, I think in that's I think in that situation, like it, it's sort of one of those motivators, I guess. Like, um, like we're uh, you guys were talking about earlier, the backlogger thing. Um, it's I guess for me, I've done that before, and it's one of those motivators to actually like finish the game, and just get through the game as quickly as possible. Right. Yeah. I think that's a big thing. Definitely. Yeah. I know Sorry. it is for me. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, for me, as far as games go, and I kind of touched on this earlier, I'm a big fan of RPGs, so story and characters kind of play a lot for me. I don't really pay attention to reviews all that much, but, um, I mean, for using Kingdoms of Ambler as a good example, I knew that R.A. Salvatore created the world for that game. I knew that... Um, there were a bunch of big name people involved in uh, 38 Studios. So that was the game I got really interested in. Obviously, they were um, a lot of the video footage that got put up got me interested in it as well. I won't just pick up a game based off a review. I'll try and research it a bit, especially if it's a game that I'm going to be paying sixty dollars for, like uh, the Game of Thrones game that's going to be coming out. There was some video footage leaked of that, and my issue with that is they essentially used the Dragon Age uh, yeah. engine, which I'm fine with, as long as it's Dragon Age Origins, not Dragon Age 2, because that game has a lot yeah. of potential. Game of Thrones is a fantastic book series. The show has obviously done well enough for them to say, hey, let's make a game. But there's a lot of potential here for this to be a big letdown. In fact, there was already a quote-unquote game of thrones game put out on steam uh last year that i don't believe was all that well uh 
enthusiastic about the, or trying to think of the right word. It wasn't all that well received. There we go. And yeah. obviously now they, they've got this whole new game and it's more actually into the, the Game of Thrones lore, which I'll be interested to see. Obviously, I'm a big fan of the books, so I know what goes on and I want to see how it follows certain characters. But it, it's, I mean, Song of Ice and Fire is a fantastic book series. It, the way they put it on the screen has done really well, but if there's anything that we've learned in the past, putting something from the screen to a video game format is not always the best thing. Uh, the only games that really worked in those sense were uh, the Star Wars franchises have done really well because there's so much canon where they can mm. pull stuff <coughs> from just a movie. Yeah, Star Wars uh, has huge cachet in general, yeah. so it's just going to draw people in. And, and obviously, the flip version of that, games to movies, doesn't always go out very well. Obviously, somehow, the Resident Evil movie franchise has done really well for itself, but for the most part, usually they really do well in one format, not very well in the other. So, Game of Thrones has that potential to be that, you know, diamond in the rough, or it can be another one of those big letdowns. So, before I go out and get that, I'm going to, of course, have to see more video footage i'm going to hear some review sites obviously while i don't really take them with a grain of salt i'll read a review because if they bring up a valid point where if they say uh the control system is terrible they tell me why it's terrible i'm more inclined to, to trust the review a little bit whereas if it says oh man this game looks good it's, it follows the, the show you should buy it that's not a review that's fanboyism yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. but um s- sort of on that spectrum i th- uh, back to Game of Thrones, I am actually sort of inclined to buy that game due to the simple fact that the producers are Atlas, which I, there hasn't been one game from that company I have played that I did not thoroughly yeah, enjoy. Yeah, I think so a lot of people of, feel that way about Atlas. Yeah, Atlas is pretty good. Um, Atlas is the, the company that, uh, that did Shining Force Feather, which is the game that I trudged through in Japanese somehow. Mm-hmm. So I, it's they they're pretty good. I'll give them that. So yeah. I'm tr- I'm willing to trust them, but I have to wait and see a little bit. Yeah. Right. The most recent well, game I picked up was actually an Atlas game, which is Trauma Center Second Opinion on Wii because I'd never yeah. played a Trauma Center game before. And uh, we'll, are, we'll see how how good that is. So, yeah. It is sort of, for me sometimes it is sort of the Bane one fag and or and <laughs> 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 fag, fag so I don't see how it's that. You know, if you if you see a Mario game, you're going to be like, yeah, I love Mario, it's so cool. Or pretty much anything Nintendo makes, unless it, you obviously see, oh, that's stupid. Mm-hmm. So there's sort of that sometimes when I consider buying a game, but at the same yeah, time... I think, yeah, that's a good point. I think that if you know a developer really well and you generally enjoy the stuff that they put out, that's another big factor in a purchasing decision. Uh, even if you don't know a lot about the game or if other people are a bit mixed about it, then the developer and your experience with them is going to be a big issue as well. Exactly. And then sometimes yeah. there's companies like Capcom where they sometimes just just screw you over. <laughs> like mm-hmm. a Morvis Capcom 3. But... Yeah. Okay. I definitely, uh, I definitely have not like not enjoyed a game from Atlas and I think for me personally like I've read Game of Thrones I've been watching Game of Thrones I would probably buy the game if I had uh, the console to support it. Alright. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you very much for calling in, and uh, we'll now move on. That's okay. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> All right, it's see ya. Been a pleasure having oh, you. Oh, okay. Thanks for coming out. Okay, okay. and uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, blah 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 blah. Et cetera, et cetera, right I think we have time. For, I think we have time for one more. If it's not going to take up too much time, mm-hmm. we've been going on for a fair bit of time, and obviously, <laughs> while it's nice to be blabbering on between the internet issues that I'm having, the stream keeps going offline. Let's not press our luck any more than we have to. Exactly. Let's uh, let's finish on a high. Uh, so I think we should have one more people. I mean, we got. Also, we got. We got Joshua Lawrence being called right now. Okay. As as and answering Mew72's question in the chat, I have my second channel is NBZ, spelt like that, what I just typed in. So you can go search that up. That's where I do my Let's Plays. 
uh, and all that good stuff. So um, let's uh, let's call this next person and uh, and do stuff. So yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, that's my Let's Play channel. Um, you can just type that into YouTube and you'll be able to find it. It's also linked on my main channel in my boxes and stuff, so you should be able to find it with relative ease, I guess. If not, then... All right, we have our caller, the final caller of the day. How are you doing today, man? Uh, is he one of our mute watchers? <laughs> no, <laughs> one of our no, deaf no, listeners? He's, 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 like, disconnected. Yeah, he's oh disconnected. He's disconnected. His question's probably going to be, why do I keep disconnecting? And yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I've been asking that question about myself. All <laughs> no, I, I think a lot of the problem with our setup is that um, I have a lot of programs running, and also we forgot that I am hosting the call as well, which we probably should have fixed earlier, but we forgot to do that. Um, Unfortunately, the only, I think the only other person who could have would have been McBoss. Right. Because my internet's crapped out like three times mm -hmm. john's left once or twice too mm -hmm. so yeah so i mean that's why also xsplit is a bit of a stupid bitch of a program sometimes and it can be a pain so uh, that's what that's what's happening basically uh, it's being a bit stupid um it does appear that our caller has oh, not rejoined call dropped well there was a, a question in the chat that we could answer about Pokemon. What was the question? It was, do we want to get... Do you think Pokemon Black and White 2 is a good or die idea or not? Okay. What do you guys think? Well, uh, <laughs> I'll let you guys go while I gather myself, because... Alright, I'll make this real brief. Um, More Pokemon, the better, really. I'm really interested to see what they'll do with this. If they'll incorporate Pokemon from different generations... That would be interesting. There's really so much they can do with this because it's the first time they've ever done it. Personally, I prefer the. Oh yeah, um, I really think this is a good idea. Uh, I mean, I get the money to pay for it, thirty-five bucks for a new adventure. Not that bad, really. But if they recycle everything from Black and White to make you fight the same gym leaders over again, I wouldn't be too happy about that. But, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, well, it's I think... it's it's better than having a gray. I think. Because having a grey is just like, oh, okay, it's like that third thing, cool. But um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how, how it does. Because I'm not sure if it's been confirmed yet or not, whether it is actually a brand new thing or if it's just a completely... Um, just yeah. they, said it's a se they said it's a sequel. So well, if it is a proper solid. sequel, then it is very interesting. Of course, I really don't give a fuck about the in-game anymore. I, I haven't done for the last four or five years now that I know the competitive aspect, um, but I'll still play through it, and I'll still just do it very quickly, because that's how Pokemon games work. I think Pokemon is one of those games that works very differently to other RPGs, in the fact that I can just go through it in, like, three days, and, like, spend, like, 20 hours doing it, and it's, like, not really too much of an issue, um, because I just know the game mechanics so well and everything, so it's a lot easier for me to just do it, uh, you know, just straight away. Um, so it does have that kind of weirdness, I guess, about it. But mm -hmm. just because I'm so familiar with it, really, basically. My thoughts are, I want to know what they're doing with it. Obviously, they've said it's a sequel, so it's not going to be uh, just the same story. I mean, it could just be a little spinoff on the story, which would make me upset. Mm -hmm. But I want to know what they're doing with this whole Kirim form before I make an, uh, an informed decision about this game. If they are introducing triple typing, that kind of that's huge. That's actually innovation. I'm excited about that. But if it's just hey, look, it's you know same double typing, but it, it's just it looks different. It, it's like okay, then why did you give me a sequel? I, I was I don't actually really um... much care about the story much like MVZ in that sense. Mm -hmm. And obviously there are a lot of people that do because they, these games sell really well and it's certainly not based off of the YouTube competitive scene because that up until recently wasn't all that big. So uh -huh. uh, it, I want to see what they're doing with it before I say this is going to bomb or this is going to be amazing. But right now I'm very I'm very sketchy about it, I think. I think it's got a, a unfortunate situation where it could become just a big gimmick, but if they do it well, I think it could be really successful. 
Definitely, definitely. The uh, triple typing was actually um, dec- uh, not confirmed. It, the uh, legendaries are going to be ice and their respective non-dragon types. So, kind of sucks. But, oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Uh, I didn't know that. Still well, double typed. So well. Yeah. Oh well. It would have been cool, but alas, there we go. And uh, wait, so that... like ice and fire and ice electric? Yep. Is that actually being 100% confirmed now? Yeah, I saw it on um, Poké Beach. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, looks like the Reshiram one is gonna be uh, a little bit fucked. Let's say. <laughs> yeah, there's something that's not gonna go over. So yeah. cool. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, um, that's gonna pretty much bring us to the end here of our podcast. Obviously, we gotta quickly, shamelessly promote ourselves. Mm-hmm. But before we do anything. Let's thank you guys for showing up. If you guys had questions and they didn't get through, I have news for you coming up shortly, but I'll let these two shamelessly promote themselves before we get into that. Johnny, you go ahead. Okay, um, my Let's Playing channel, which is my only channel, is a YouTube user. <laughs> is a YouTube Johnny Awesome. I am currently doing Pokemon Blue version and going to do something really close after that, and it's going to be really cool. Um do pretty funny commentaries not really nearly as awkward as this podcast has been <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh feel free to check me out if you'd like and uh yeah awesome you got a twitter as well didn't you oh yes i do uh johnny awesome twitter yeah okay uh yeah i'm just doing normal stuff on my channel this week i guess i might upload another cdi thing if nagi is going to make me do that again <laughs> <laughs> we'll see we'll see how that goes um, but general battles PO etc 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 through the week um, Twitter oh, yeah. at NBZ YouTube Emperor's Nub and Facebook Lord NBZ so there you go well uh-huh. for me obviously Twitter high and fiber uh, YouTube is high and fiber 21 uh, as far as uploads and stuff, I have, especially with my internet being what it is right now, that they, they kind of stagger in. But the one thing that I would like to certainly promote is a little side project. Very much goes hand in hand with this podcast. It is I, episode one is out right now. It's called Beyond the Podcast, where I will go over some of the new things that don't make it into the podcast. And if you guys have questions that you want to see or opinions on a topic, I'd love for you guys to be able to put them in that way. If you can't make it to one of our streams or unfortunately time constraints don't let us get you in, you would certainly have a better chance to get your question asked on Beyond the Podcast. There is a video of that on my channel. The questions can be emailed into beyondthepodcast at gmail.com. And that way, you know, you guys can continue to have the experience of two and a half gamers throughout the week when we're not here. And then on top of that, I typically do, uh, you know, League of Legends highlights and, and stuff like that. Uh, I have other stuff being planned right now, but trying to figure out what I want to do with them. And then, of course, internet problems need to be fixed before anything solid goes out. So, of course, Twitter, High and Fiber, and YouTube.com slash Fiber 21 Sub me. I love you guys. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Well, um, guys, thank you for letting me be your substitute uh, Californian midget for the day. Uh, <laughs> it was a pleasure, and I would gladly do it any time. I definitely enjoyed this experience. So. Thank you very much for coming on last minute. It's... Lovely having you here. Yeah. All right. Go pick some you. oranges or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, if they, and if you're... a basket of oranges happened to find itself on my doorstep, I would not be up against that either. Wink, wink, touch, nudge. All right. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye.
dun 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 <laughs> you use this as outtakes. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. <laughs>